the final round of Fanatec GT World Challenge Europe, powered by AWS Sprint Cup. We're by the seaside. The Dutch circuit of Zandvoort is our host for the final two races of what has been an ultra competitive season. And it's been a wet and windy Zandvoort thus far. Squally conditions all day. Friday was a real test for the teams as we get set for the championship showdown. Silver, gold, and the overall competition all up for grabs this weekend. It is a three-way fight in pro. It's a five-way fight in gold and a two-way battle in silver. The European Cup, of course, part of the global Fanatec GT World Challenge that includes America, Australia and Asia. We've had all five endurance events, four of the five sprint events. And it's titles on the line here in two one-hour blasts. In pro, where you can have any category of driver, three crews are all going for the title. Having already won endurance, Timor Bogoslavski and Rafael Marcello desperately want to win the Sprint Cup as well. And it's a title that thus far this season. I didn't expect, to be honest, what we did in the endurance championship. But yeah, I mean, this is a great result, I think. And also our result at Spa, it's really good. Always is not so easy, I mean, in this championship, as we know. Normally we was fighting on the WRT at the end of the championship, but this year it's not like this. We will try our best, so as always. Opposition comes from the Audi of Matteo Drudi and Ricardo Fella. They're seven and a half points back. They've had two race wins this season. They've got to win both races this weekend. It's not easy. I mean, we saw during the whole season that uh, Mercedes, it's, uh, it's really fast, has been really fast every race, so they were always there. There are not many, many points in which you can overtake, especially with the GT3 car, when everyone is so close to each other. So I think uh, qualifying is going to be the key, and then pit stop where you can win and lose many times. It's not going to be easy, but we try to get it. The Sprint Cup champions for the last three seasons have been Dries Van Thor and Charles Wirtz. This a transitional year for them with BMW at WRT. They weren't really expecting to be in the hunt. We did not um, expect it, though we, that was the aim, of course, to be there and to, to be still in the fight. Of course, we all want to get the drivers and the team, but so realistically, I think the team is much more uh, possible. So we will do our best to try to score as much points as we can and uh, hopefully grab the title for the team. All five season-long entrants could win the Gold Cup, and it's going to be a fascinating brace of races to determine the champions this year. Aurelian Panis is the man in charge with Alberto Di Folco. Three victories they have had this year, and they head the championship by six points coming into the weekend. It's really close. It was a nice battle until here. Now it's the last uh, last race, two, two more races. So we are leading, it's the uh, best position, I think, before this weekend, but yes, yeah, very close, so we will push until then. This is the main opposition, the WRT run, BMW of Callan Williams and Nicholas Cruton. They've also had three wins, they're six points back. It's going to be a really tough battle between the two cars this weekend. Well, we try and win, but obviously it's going to be difficult, um, especially with the weather around here very difficult in Zandvoort. The main thing is to keep it clean and uh, try to force the others into some errors and then hopefully get the championship. It's going to be difficult, but I think we have a good chance. Another team in with a chance of winning, Gilles Magnus and Finley Hutchison in the Comteu Ram Audi. They had a win in Valencia. They're 14 and a half points off the lead. It's going to be tough for them. It's been a very positive season. Uh, I think we got a few unlucky moments, which cost us a lot of points. But for the rest, we were always there, there in, uh, in pace. It was very pleasant as well to work together with Finlay. It was the first season together. Let's try to finish it on a high year in Zandvoort. In theory, we still have a shot at the championship. It will be very tough, but we will give it all we got. Nothing to lose. The Silver Cup is led by Alex Arca and Lorenzo Petrezzi, the category for the young guns of GT racing. They had a double win last time out in Valencia. They've had five wins over the course of the season, but only have a one-point lead. It's ultra close going into race one. It's been a tough season so far. Um, I think that we want to become victorious just after, after all. I think we've done a good job until now, but uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be tight. It's just a racing weekend like every other, and I think I'll treat it like that. And I think the entire team, also Lorenzo, we're all settled for anything. So whatever happens, we take it and uh, we try to to gain the title and gain what we deserve. 
The opposition comes from Jordan Love's Mercedes. He's shared the season with Frank Bird and Alain Valente, hence he's on a different number of points from co-drivers. And he's only one point back from the Audi duo. I think we just got to go into this weekend and most importantly enjoy it, enjoy the challenge. It's the last one for the year and uh, just try and maximise what we've learned throughout the season. It's been uh, toing and froming all year, you know, we've been in the lead, we've been second, it's been one hell of a battle and we always seem to find each other on the track too. So it's going to be a, a last lap Sunday thing, I think. Almost time to go racing. Welcome everybody to Zandvoort. Race one of the weekend in Fanatec GT World Challenge Europe, powered by AWS Sprint Cup. With pro, gold and silver titles all on the line. Bronze already decided. There is no bronze category running here because the number of pit garages available, the track license uh, available means that we would just have too many cars. Even so, we have our biggest ever Sprint Cup Zandvoort grid. And there it is, the car's almost being blown off the circuit. You can see just how windy it is. And in the last half an hour or so, we've had rain, we've had hail, we've had sunshine. We've got these really strong winds, 8.8 uh, uh, metres per second. It's getting windier. The track, at least, is drying. David Anderson and John Watson trackside. And John, what a track it is. Amazing, Zandvoort. What a wonderful racetrack. So many fond memories of racing here over many years. Slightly different circuit, now 14 turns, not quite as long, 4.3 kilometres in length, 2.6 miles. And literally, David, you're talking about the weather. We've had all four seasons in the space of the last 10 minutes, and we don't know whether it's going to rain, sun, hail, blow. Well, it's going to blow anyway. It's never stopped blowing <laughs> since I arrived yesterday. So uh, getting tyres up to temperature will be one thing, and the race director, for safety reasons, with this change in the conditions, giving the teams two formation laps. So away they blast, and the formation lap then the first of them is underway. Ricardo Feller starting uh, on pole position, and it will be Lauren Heinrich in the Koblenegar Racing Team Porsche that lines up alongside. Let's look at the grid for race one. Ricardo Feller for Audi, Lauren Heinrich for Porsche, ahead of Raffaele Marcello in the Mercedes AMG, and Andrea Caldarelli's Lamborghini. Fifth starts Dries Van Thor. Fred Vavish goes from sixth, ahead of Albert Costa and the McLaren of Christian Kleen. Eighth, ninth will be Consta Lapalainen's Ferrari and the best of the silvers, pole position for Alex Arca. He, in turn, is ahead of Patrick Niederhauser and Nikolai Schiergaard. Then the best of the gold contingent, that Gilles Magnus alongside Christian Engelhardt. Valentino Rossi starts 15th. Jordan Love, uh, second of the silvers on the grid, fighting for a championship, of course, ahead of Nicholas Crittem and Thomas Neubauer. Then Lucas Legere, a long, long way back on the grid. He's alongside Norbert Siedler, ahead of Aurelien Panis. Marcus Pavarud starts 22nd on the grid, then Jacopo Guidetti and Cesar Gazzo. 26th is Simon Gachet, another Audi driver a long way back. Nicola Marinangeli comes next, ahead of Jesse Salman Audio and Paul Meyer, who went off late in the session this morning and calls the red flag. Owen Zanotti and Gregoire de Moustier round out a 30-strong grid. Off the banking they will come, we will get set to go racing. And with a little bit more warmth in the Pirelli tyres, the penultimate race of the season is good to go. The cars accelerate up towards the timing line. The lights will change. And one hour of GT racing, or the remainder of one hour of GT racing is underway. There's a car in the wall in the background already. Somebody pulled out of the draft and got into the pit wall. They've all survived it, but drama into the first corner. Three wide, and there, big, big problems on the outside line. That looks like Lucas Legere is out of the race already. Now, I was going to say, good start made by Dries Van Thor, but a better one by Marcello, who gets up the inside of Ricardo Feller. Feller fights back into turn three, rounds Marcello out wide, and up the inside tries to go Albert Costa in the Ferrari, and he looks to make a move. Yeah, Sal Costa's in the right part of the racetrack now, but Marcello's going to face him down, swoop around the outside, up the sky for... So, I mean, a very forceful, aggressive start from Marcello, but he knew he had to do it. He tried almost, he succeeded in getting past Feller, but again, he was sort of outmaneuvered coming through the Hogan Hulls Hairpin Bend. It looks as though also number 18 Lamborghini of Paul Meyer did not make the start. But in the meantime, it was Lucas Legere with damage that we lost. We'll piece all the replays together. There he is, limping back. But that's the end of the race, and that's the end of any mathematical hope. And now look for the race lead. Marcello's off the road. He's all sideways. He's in the gravel. This could be a disaster for the championship. The championship leader off the road. Down, 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 down through the order he tumbles. Too ambitious, trying to go the wrong way, the, the long way around the outside into turn 10 on Ricardo Feller, caught the damper part of the racetrack and just slid off 
nothing he could do. And now we have got a motor race, haven't we? Because watching Marcello fight back is going to be well worth watching. Rossi's in strive on the outside. Engelhardt in the green Porsche up the curb on the inside. This much more slippery part of the circuit compared to the first part of the lap. Ricardo Feller trying to get away. That is Jordan Love trawling all over the back of Alex Arca. Ricardo Feller is away and gone. And all pressure that he had from Marcello has evaporated halfway around the opening lap. So Feller is in the pound seat and he's got a significant advantage. Coming across to our finish line on the second place. So Albert Costa two and a half seconds behind. Calderoni slides up the inside of Heinrich in the Porsche and he makes a stick. And then in fifth place, it's Fred Verwies. Sixth is Patrick Niederhauser. Down to seventh, Dries van Thor, who got run out wide on that first lap as well. In eighth place, Consta Lapalina. Ninth, leading Silver Jordan Love. Tenth is Alex Arker. What happened to Marcello? Fifth team's position. What a mistake. Very rarely we've seen a mistake like that in these conditions. But there was a risk that he took, and of course that risk, immediately he got that damper part of the racetrack. He was a passenger, could do, there he is now, look at the pace coming up, up the hill, through turn seven and eight, into Skyfall. Now he's going to make short shift, I suspect, of those cars directly ahead of him, but he knows track limited on certain parts of the circuit when it comes to making an overtake. Many of you will be familiar with the franchise of movies Fast and Furious. That's Marcello. He's fast and he's furious after making that mistake, and he's on a charge right now, picking his way through the traffic, trying to find a way through on the inside, and he's done so. Well, there it is the scene of the Owen contact between Porsche and McLaren, and that well-inhibited Marcello again, contact coming back between the two. Car stopped on the left-hand side, didn't quite see who that was. Safety car, it's Legere who has stopped. Remember the battered Audi, I think he's just ground to a halt. The safety car has been called, so we're gonna go safety car. And Lucas Legere's car has ground to a halt, and they'll all bunch up. That's bad news for Ricardo Feller. Kind of helps Marcello to an extent because it will bunch them all up ahead of him. And that's Legere trying to limp it back with broken suspension. Yeah, I mean, that one wonders what the wisdom is of coming when you're so far from the pit lane entrance to drive it back. And there's a pause that up on the Skyfold as well. Who's gone off? That's Greg Wadamuzzi. Greg Wadamuzzi, yeah, yeah. We haven't seen that car before. So that's another reason why we've gone to a safety car. Right, let's have a look at the start. Look in the background up against the pit wall because there is one car that dives out of the queue and oh, bam, yes. gets sideways. And clips the wall. Yeah. But that didn't, what went on behind was a totally separate incident from that. The, I think it was Legere actually that hit the wall. So that's what it did for his suspension. And there he comes across the road and there's a secondary contact because he got caught up with the Honda. This is it from another angle? So it was Legere who caught the, the, the damp part of the circuit, slithered into the wall. Uh, there was a Ferrari that got all sideways further back as well. Now look at Van Thor in the red BMW. He was third, but then he gets run out wide. Yeah, he was the wrong part of the exit of Tarzan, so he was sitting there as a passenger waiting for those inside him to conclude the exit of the corner. In the meantime, Marcello was charging up through the field, trying to get the long way around, coming out of the Hogan Hulse, and then he gets bang, uh, not bang, but side by side, with Albert Costa. And this was Marcello's mistake, John. Yes, indeed, on the outside of the racetrack, and you see all of a sudden, where is the grip? But it's non-existent, and he's sitting there as a passenger driving through the gravel, has got to go the long way, well, he's just gonna drive back across the gravel, to get back, took the shortcut, made it work for him, and directly behind another, was that one of the BMWs also, just catching the gravel yeah. at the exit of the corner. That was Nicholas Crutton, which is significant in gold. This is Marcello from on board. He was lucky not to get stuck in the gravel, wasn't he? I think maybe because the amount of rain that's fallen off and on over the day. Oh, look at the opposite lock. He knew, he knew before he got there he was in trouble. It was a big punt on his part, Green. but the gravel fortunately isn't quite as, uh, it's, it's more compacted with the rain. And we are back racing and Ricardo Fella has gone early, coming out of turn 13. He will build the gap once more as they come over the line, racing again at Zandvoort. So we wait to see where 88 comes through. It is currently in 14th position, directly behind Christian Engelhardt in the Porsche. Calderelli's having a defensive on Heinrich, and Heinrich thinks, can he get the nose up the inside of the Lamborghini? Well, he got alongside the rear wheel, but not sufficient to claim any ground. Now makes the cut back to make, not here, but coming into Hugenholz Airport, where he'll take the high line. Calderelli covers that, but Heinrich should have the slightly better drive off. But has he got the pace to get anything with the Lamborghini? No, but he's certainly hassling Calderelli all the way through these high-speed curves up to Skyflock. 
Nose to tail, Lamborghini ahead of Porsche and the Audi of Patrick Niederhauser is joining the party as well. Laren Heinrich then tries to unsettle Calderelli in the Vincenzo Sospiri racing Lamborghini as they come now up towards turn eight. And that battle pack is growing because their Vijan Van Thor are on the back. Calderelli is not escaping and Niederhauser gets up the inside of Heinrich. That Porsche looked really good this morning when it was dry. In these damp, almost intermediate conditions at certain parts of the track, it's struggling a bit. Well, to me, I think Heinrich's looking at alternative lines, not so much on the entry, but where would he gain on the exit? Looking on board the 32, and that was an overtake, I thought. But suddenly, uh, well, currently Van Thor in seventh place for Vij directly ahead of him in sixth. So, Drivers are using different parts of the racetrack where they think they can get a better. There's Jordan Love and Love and that's another battle for eighth position. And Love's got to be careful. I mean, he's gone through, but he doesn't want to put himself in jeopardy. So here they come up towards the end of the lap. Jordan Love hunting for traction. This part so tippy toey compared to other much drier elements of the racetrack. So Ricardo Feller leads up towards the line. This will put eight laps in the book and it's been a much more dramatic start than we could ever have anticipated. Over the line here comes Dries Van Thorey, still seventh, down towards Tarzan. Behind him, eighth look is Love, ninth is Lapalina, tenth is Valentino Rossi, and behind them is Marcello. So Marcello's done well to clear those behind him, and uh, he is certainly on a move to get into the top ten. He's got the next car up will be... This, I'm going to say Valentino Rossi, it's not. It's the second of the two Ferraris, Rossi swooped around the outside and got back ahead of Lapalana and so it's the Ferrari now directly ahead of Marcello. Calderelli again being defensive, Patrick Niederhauser all. Uh... So this is Van Thorne that you're riding with, he's in seventh place. He had a go to get past Favich to no avail. Speed building then now as they come down, uh, approaching 220 kilometers an hour down to the Hans Ernst box and Calderelli falling back in the pack. What I was trying to say, and after getting stumbling over my words, was Heinrich has actually overtaken on this lap, yep. gotten ahead of, uh, of Calderelli, so that's where I was going. I, I can't get my words out quick enough. So there's the battle still raging for sixth and seventh place between the BMW and the Audi. Now, this is still the battle for honours in gold, but number 30, Nicholas Crutton, is under investigation for the safety car procedure, so he's just been mugged for the category lead, and now there's a question mark over how the car was being driven under the safety car. As Matthew Drudy gets ready to take over the leading car. Well, that's a surprise to make an early pit stop, but maybe the team looking at not so much where he is coming in, obviously, in the lead, but where he will be when that car goes back out, and they want to put uh, Matteo Drudy back into the car with literally no traffic around him to give him the benefit of clear track, fresh rubber. But is that a problem on the left rear? Or... Oh, get out of the way, get out of the way. Oh, that's what it was. Was that a non-safe release? Well, well, that we looked at, that's for sure. But what it was, was giving the car the lead back again in goal because the BMW look came out ahead of number nine, Audi. So he was second coming in, but back in the lead on the pit stop. So that release kept the BMW just ahead and it brought back the lead in goal. So Vermeulen will take over the wheel of the 69. Vermeulen is behind the wheel of the 69. As it returns, there we see the car making its way slowly, slowly till they cross the pit lane exit before he can get up to race speed. And that's on the inside of the Tarzan hairpin. There's a queue of cars there. Look, so back on track. Now the Ferrari jumps ahead of the Audi. So Matteo Drudy, look at the gap. It's been another seemingly slow stop from the Audi squad. 56.2 seconds, that. The pit stop time. Well, disappointing indeed for all the good work done on the racetrack to lose. A 35 second time penalty added to the final racing time, overtaking before the line at the end of the safety car procedure. I confess I didn't hear the car number for I that. I think that was the BMW of Gerson. Uh, I think that's right. what it was. Okay. As in comes Niederhauser, in comes Marcello. Yes, yeah, so this is going to be key. It's a, a quick pit stop for the Kudas ASP Mercedes team and likewise for the Porsche. But uh, let's wait and see. Can this be. Executed. So Timo Bogoslavski now, this is going to put pressure on. He's behind the wheel. New tyres go on the car. Lolo walks around the back, out of the way. There, heading down the pit lane now, number 25 Audi that Patrick Niederhauser has given over to Owen Basta. And Timo Bogoslavski will rejoin the race now as well. This is going to be fascinating for the championship. I think overall, they're good as, as P Mercedes team will have gained. 
And the little bands, so he comes out, he's made, I mean, he's suddenly from going into the pits, effectively in the lead, but the, the, the team have done a good pit stop, got Kogoslowski out ahead of cars. That would be difficult to overtake. It's put him ahead of the Porsche. So Marcello has uh, brought the car in and a demon pit stop has effectively put that, I reckon, into third place because they're ahead of Heinrich now. Might be fourth, depending on where the Niederhauser Bastar Audi is. We'll check at the end of the lap, but that's been a get-out-of-jail-free car for Akkodis ASP, hasn't it? Oh, dear, the McLaren off, and that's up at Turn 10. That's Patrick Krupinski, the team manager, team owner, and where that is, I rather fear we might be getting another interruption to the race. We'll oh, see. Oh, sorry, it looks yeah. like it got a bit screwily under yeah. braking. And that gives renewed optimism, doesn't it, for Guven, thinking if I apply the pressure, I might be able to have a go. Vermeulen leads Drudy by a second and a half. Erwin Bastar is third, so this is the fight for fourth. Bogoslavski, then Guven, then Martin, then Bart, then Wirtz. And I suppose that the only good news story for the 88 Mercedes is it is ahead on the road of the number 40. I'm just going to see where that 40 is. Oh, so um, it's in second place. So it is a full course yellow. It is. Full well, course yellow now. But I think Bogoslavski slowed rather early there. But anyway, everybody was able to avoid drama and the whole position. So we've got full course yellow with that car in the gravel and also off the racetrack, number 54 Porsche. Adrian Delina has had a spin. That's in a really awkward place. That's in a very bad. That's coming into Skyfall. Again, maybe a mirror of what we had seen in qualifying this morning when a one of the Lamborghinis driven by the local Dutchman went off, so he's got it rolling, there it is. But was that an assist or was that all? I think he was hit because the full course yellow was called and I think Delina responded to it quicker than people behind. From what I think was number nine, Alberto Di Folco. This is on board. The, the, the contact doesn't need to be particularly heavy at that part of the racetrack. You're coming up through a right-hand corner and you're beginning to bleed off of the throttle so the car will be slightly unbalanced anyway. The Moulin bleeding. Close to a win, less than 12 minutes of the race to go. Is he going to be resolute under the pressure? We're about to find out because towards turn 13 comes Timo Bogoslavski. He in turn has got Ayn Schenguven's Porsche right up behind him. Vermeulen busily weaving to try to keep temperature in the tyres. Now he accelerates away. Bogoslavski's got to go with them, but actually, no, Vermeulen has not gone yet. Now he does, coming out of turn 14, blast away. And Drudy has got Erwin Bastar's out. He tucked up behind him. And Marcello, I've got Marcello. And Bogoslavski is about to be mugged. He didn't stick to the tail of the idea for third position. And Maxi Martin, likewise, trying to find a way through coming down into Tarzan. One place lost then to Guven, possibly another one to Martin. But in fairness, Bogoslavski stood his ground, but he gets run out wide. And the BMW is going to go through. Is it? Is it? Is it? Yes, Martin clears him. And that was all because of that restart. Now, Bogoslavski tries to go high to regain. But look, coming up the inside, you got Bart as well. So he needs to be absolutely on his toes. Bogoslavski did not maintain that proximity to third position that he ought to have done at that restart. And he, made him, he left himself wide open coming into Tarzan, not only for the Porsche, but for Maxime Martin to find a way around. That's good news for Drudy then, because even if he can't catch and clear the Ferrari, Bogoslavski has dropped two places. That's helpful for points in the championship. And there, look to the inside line. Jordan, uh, sorry, Frank Byrne has a go at Charles Witt, and the Mercedes gets his nose in front. It's a long nose, admittedly. To the inside line is Witt, and he takes the place back. Charles Witt goes back through, and on the inside line as well, Jean Bantis Simenau's BMW. Now, Simenau trying also to so get a Look at the Mercedes, absolutely Frank Bird trying, I mean, running strongly, but having to be defensive, Charles Fiat not looking as if he's getting the maximum potential performance from the BMW at this point. And there, look, is Owen Bastard under attack from Guven, and Guven's under attack from Martin. Then you've got Bogoslavski, Guven commits to the inside, there's not quite enough room, Martin to the outside. And a good chance for Bogoslavski, likewise, because Guven compromised himself, now the Mercedes, it comes up along the outside, but goes, dives back oh. very quickly, covered by the Porsche, back to the left-hand side of the racetrack, and the BMW and the Audi. So this race, for, certainly for these last podium positions, by no means over. Bogoslavski is alongside Guven, who is just to the left, and I think the Mercedes might get through. Let's see. Yes, he does, but he's on the wrong line for the next corner. Guven dives up the inside of the Audi as well. Martin's gone, look, he's clear, he's away. And now Guven is up alongside Bastar. Side by side they run. The Porsche has the inside for the Slotomokabat. 
now up towards Skyflak this time around on the outside. Oh, contact. contact! Off goes the Audi! The Porsche avoids him and runs wide, and Bogoslowski's gained two places back! Absolutely, and I'm sitting there, watched what was happening. Audi's going to get back on track, but the Porsche may not. And again, the battling BMWs and Frank Berg doing a great job on his return to the scene of that 77 Mercedes. So that helped Bogoslowski hugely because the two places he'd lost, he's just won back. They both carried on, I think. The Audi went all the way through the gravel and rejoined. And Guven, although he ran out wide, is still circulating as well. So, it's a pretty charmed life for Bogoslowski in this. It might not have been a great restart, but that's just come to him. Look at this. And side by side contact, Porsche got clobbered. Audi up the inside, Bata, really, I mean, you can see how quickly he was going. Both cars get back on here on board. This is the bird's eye view, or the Bogoslowski's eye view of all this action out through turn four. Then side by side, was the contact at five, or did it wait until we got up the hill, up into the turn? And then, oh, he hit the curb on the inside, which pushed the car wide. It wasn't intentional. That just, he caught the curb, car was deflected to the left, caught the Porsche, and that will be a, a, a tale of woe. That's for the overall lead. Drew it to the outside line. Can't do it there, but he'll have the inside line for the next corner. This is toe to toe, and it's crucial for the outcome of the championship. Audi briefly ahead, Audi fully ahead. Drudy has done it. Fantastic. Good, good professional race and overtake by Matteo Drudy. And, and, and likewise for a moment, he could have thrown everything away. Could have seen both cars out, but he gave sufficient racing ground and he, he gave up that win, that potential win. But we've still got four and a half minutes remaining, so we don't know. But obviously the pace of the RD, the pace of Matteo Drudy, sufficient. And that was a well executed overtake by a driver with so much experience and just so much quality. And that is the Owen Bastar Audi in the pit lane. That was the car, remember, that spun through the gravel at Skyflach. Well, it's no surprise, perhaps, that it picked up a little bit of damage. Race one at Zandvoort, it's a win for Matteo Drudy and Ricardo Feller. Audi wins in Holland. Drudy and Feller victorious, Vermeulen and Costa second. Maxime Martin, Valentino Rossi third ahead of Raffaele Marcello and Timo Bogostowski fourth. And that is a result given that we had the car, what, 20th after Marcello went through the gravel. Ricardo Feller and Matteo Drudy, the winners, ahead of Albert Costa and Thierry Vermeulen with Valentino Rossi and Maxi Martin taking third. Fourth, really good recovery after being in the gravel on lap one. Rafael Marcello and Timo Bogoslavski. Fifth, Fred Vavish and Nicholas Bart with sixth, Dries Van Thor and Charles Weirds. Silver winners were seventh, Jordan Love and Frank Bird. The gold winners were 11th, Aurelien Panis and Alberto Di Folco. And that's good news for both uh, Jordan Love and also the crew of Panis and Di Folco in their respective championship battles. Boys, congratulations. That's exactly what you needed to put you ahead in the championship going into tomorrow's race. I'll come to you first. Ricardo, that pit stop was uh, a little bit slow, it seemed. What was going on at that point? Well, I think we came in too early, first of all, and then the pit stop itself was not ideal. I overshot quite a bit because I was underestimating uh, the grip from uh, from the pit lane here. But in the end, it worked out. Mattia did an awesome job uh, overtaking the Ferrari. It's super difficult, especially here. Uh, he made it, so uh, yeah, he's the hero today. And uh, like you said, very good for the championship. Yeah, I mean, that was some overtake. You know, the pressure on you there to get ahead must have been high. Yeah, yeah, it was not the easiest uh, stint of my life, for sure. Uh, I was surprised in the car how much time we lost in the pit stop. I think Ricardo said everything with it. Maybe slightly too early when the track was not completely dry yet. Uh, but it worked out. I mean, the important was to get the win, uh, the pole this morning. So today we got the maximum point we could have. Uh, and we try to do again tomorrow the same. Absolutely. Well, good luck for tomorrow. Get a good rest tonight, hey? <laughs> That's win number three of the year for the Audi drivers, and they are now two and a half points to the good over Marcello and Bogoslowski with Dries Van Thor and Charles Witt. Next, then it's Thierry Vermeulen and Albert Costa uh, with Lucas Legere and Christopher Hauser behind. Sixth in the championship now, Valentino Rossi and Maxime Martin after another podium, third in today's race. Matteo Drudi, Ricardo Feller win at Zandvoort. For one last time in 2023, we are set to go racing in Fanatec GT World Challenge Europe, powered by AWS Sprint Cup. One final hour, two drivers, so two stints, and three championships on the line. Silver, gold, and of course, the 
uh, Pro Cup as well. And what we thought we knew after qualifying has changed as well because of times being disallowed for people improving under yellow flags. What we thought we knew after yesterday's race has changed a bit uh, with uh, penalties being applied post-race. We'll catch up on all of that in a moment. John Watson and David Addison trackside and trackside at a great old school venue, John. Love it, love it, love it. 4.3 kilometers, 2.6 miles, 14 turns all the way through the dunes and then back onto the straight, the bank corner, the Aaron Lyon Dyke bot. Uh, unique in, I think, European racing these days. So an exciting var variety of corners. And the track is sort of dry. It has been a pretty horrible weekend weather-wise. The wind is so strong that any rain that does fall, it gets blown away fairly swiftly, but there's more rain forecast. In the championship then, this is how we look uh, overall in pro. Mattia Drudi and Ricardo Feller are ahead by two and a half points from Raffaele Marcello and Timo Bogoslavski. It is effectively winner takes all between those two crews. Well, there's much to look at in terms of a race as they will be looking at the abacus. The fans are all keeping warm and they are ready for what promises to be a big, big battle. You can see how windy it is as well as the flags blow. Pole position car it is the BMW of Valentino Rossi. He is with Gemma Scott. Valley, the first pole position in the GT World Challenge Europe Championship. A great place to be. Yes, the, the better place to be before, uh, before the start. We are very happy and uh, we will see because uh, the conditions are uh, very difficult like yesterday. Have uh, a bit of mixed condition, but we can start with the slick. Yesterday in this condition uh, we were strong and uh, we arrived at the end on the podium. Today we can start uh, a lot more in front, but you know, it's a one hour race. Uh, yesterday everything happened, you know, we need to be, to be strong from the beginning to the end uh, and uh, I will try to do a good stint. And of course so far today we've had rain, we've had hailstones, we've got sunshine at the moment but who knows if that's going to hold out. How tricky does it get here with those conditions? Very much, very much, especially because uh, is, um, in some places it's more wet, some places it's more dry. So you need to understand where you can push or not. Uh, but it looks like that now the condition is better than, uh, than yesterday, it's a little bit more dry. But like you say, uh, we hope that uh, resist for one hour. Absolutely, have a great race. Thanks, Valley. Thank you. Thank you. Ciao. So Valentino Rossi will do the second stint. The man there in the blue overalls is Maxime Martin. It was his qualifying time, but it was only the third fastest time. The two cars ahead, Giacomo Altuez, Ferrari, Benjamin Goethe's McLaren, they were both given uh, a, a drop, uh, had their lap time taken away, for improving under yellow flags. And the teams uh, not very pleased about it. This is the championship leading car, but only ninth on the grid. Matteo Drudi has got some work to do, John. He has, and the car that he's challenging, or was going to challenge the number 40 Audi, is just one grid slot further up the grid. That's the 88 Akoda SP Mercedes. And we're going to see Timo Bogoslowski. He will take the start. So starts for the Mercedes will be on the fourth row of the grid and seventh position. And then just over to their right will be the 40 Audi. So it'll be, it'll be tricky for both those two teams to ensure they get through the first corner without contact amongst anybody in the field. Now, in gold, yesterday, Alberto Di Folco and Aurelian Panis won on the road. They were given a penalty post-race for the contact that eliminated number 54, Porsche. They dropped down to fourth in class. Callum Williams and Nicholas Critton got a point for pole uh, in uh, gold this morning. So it is very, very close indeed between those two. Now, what about Timo Bogoslowski's chances? He will start 88 Mercedes. He's with Jeff. Timo, the job is quite simple now. You've just got to get out there and finish ahead of the 40. Ah, oh, yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know what, what position exactly I want to finish compared to them. But, yeah, I know just what we need to be in front of them, and that's it. So, uh, yeah, I hope other drivers will keep um, mind. So, and, uh, yeah. I will just try to do a safe start, you know, to not lose position compared to anybody, and uh, yeah, try to yeah, try to do my best so and to give Carlello in the best position what we could do, so, and we will see. Thank you. Have a good race. And now there's Timo Bogoslowski, and he's touched on it, John. Key to this stint is keeping out of trouble, but in keeping out of trouble, he can't just give away place after place. No, and we've seen what happens at the start. We had a reasonably good start yesterday we thought and then all of a sudden it, it just went nuts at the tail of the field there was contact with cars and cars then off to the barriers and into the gravel and so on and so forth so everybody will be acutely aware that these are tricky starting conditions 
and everybody needs to be aware that you make contact before you get into turn one, let alone in turn one. That could be your race over, and it could be even worse, it could be your championship over. Three and a half points, the margin between Jordan Love and then Ricardo Petresi, Alex Alka in the silver contest. What about the chances overall of Ricardo Feller? He's with Gemma. Ricardo, it's literally going down to the final hour. And of course, the job in hand is obvious right now. Qualifying threw up some surprises, I think, though. Yeah, quality was not ideal. I um, think it could have been a bit better. Mattia was super quick. But uh, yeah, that's part of it. And uh, I think now that the uh, track conditions are tricky again, like yesterday. So I'm really looking forward. It will be, it will be interesting. And obviously, starting with the, the rival car just ahead with Timo starting that one. Do you think Mattia's got an advantage here? Yeah, I think uh, Mattia can have, when he has a good start, I think maybe he can get next to him or even in front. I um, mean, this would be ideal. Uh, but on the other side, everything can happen. Uh, there are some cars in the front where, which maybe are not always used to be in the front. And uh, everyone in the last race probably wants to go for a podium or for a victory. So I think everything can happen. And uh, yeah, just uh, we try to, to do our best. And in the end, it will come how it comes. Let's say good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Now we understand there are going to be two formation laps. So the second one will be within the time. And Ricardo Feller says good luck to Matteo Drudi. And both of them know the enormity of the task ahead of them now because that Mercedes has just looked so, so strong over the course of the season. And this was a quick car yesterday. It finished second in the race. Thierry van Mullen uh, will start, and he starts from seventh, John. Yeah, it's a car that, I mean, really, all they thought was going to win the race, and then a great pass by Matteo Drudi got him ahead. Again, Thierry van Mullen this morning in qualifying looked very strong. Uh, and now I find himself, it was changing literally almost by the car coming across start finish line and of course the final lap and the car that made that final crossing before the flag as the flag came out was probably the one that was going to end up on the front of the grid. Then of course penalties were applied to the Ferrari and uh, others then the McLaren in particular. And that I know was a very big disappointment to Garage 159. They thought they were within what is the regulation but clearly they weren't and the penalty has to be paid. Now, this is the best-placed Mercedes on the grid. It is the car of Frank Bird. He will start. That means it is an extra point in silver for him and co-driver Jordan Love. Jordan Love, therefore, with a slightly increased margin now. Three and a half ahead of the Patrese Arca Audi. This could be quite a good day for Arkin Arca, the man behind the Attempto team, if his son could be silver champion and if his overall class car could win the championship. But uh, in both cases, there's a, a pesky Mercedes to overcome. Yeah, and the 77 Mercedes has been strong all weekend. I mean, they've done an excellent job, Frank Bird coming back. I was just hesitating because I thought there was a gap on the grid next to the 88 Mercedes. It might just be the way they'd lined up, but it looked as though there was a, a gap on the grid. Well, that ought to be the 69 Ferrari, but um, mm. we need to have a little look back and see again if that was just a... The, the, well, there is a gap. No, I think the Ferrari is actually a little bit... It is there, but it's just the, yeah, right. it's the offset on the grid. Yeah. The, the left lane, as you're looking at it, the Ferrari is right under the rear wing of the McLaren. There it is. And there yeah. is the 69 Ferrari, and there is the McLaren directly ahead of it. Good. Panic over. Thank you. Well spotted. So the uh, Ferrari is there. Thierry Vermeulen will start. He'll be a man to watch. I wonder why they've put it so far forward, though, unless it's purely to let people have access to the gap in the pit wall. So the gate is there. Uh, I'd rather have people dodging the back of the car, they just give them more space, I think, mean, simple as that. Right, the grid is formed, the engines fire, the one-minute board shown, last engineers off the grid, and it's still a pretty damp road. Damp in parts, but there are, there's a drying line, certainly, on your screen, on the right of the screen, going into tires and helper, but you can see the patchy, yeah. the, the light tarmac, that's the drying bits, and the darker bits are the patchy bits, but it's not just here. This is a part of the racetrack that probably is relatively not too difficult. The, bit, the area we noticed this morning in qualifying was coming out of the, it's out of turn 10, but the turn, they've caught the bock. Anyway, down all the way down into the Hans Ernst bock, the chicane. That part of the racetrack seemed to hold moisture longer than any other part, so it'll be interesting to see not just in these two parade laps, but actually when the race gets going, what the track conditions are going to offer up, and everybody will be on slicks. They'll not have the slicks up to full race temperature, so they need to be, again, say, being careful. I don't need to tell anybody to be careful. Well, the green flag shown, and the first of the two formation laps is underway. Timo Bogoslowski a bit slow away, but uh, gets going now. Uh, one of our 
TV crew team said it on his weather app that it was going to rain at half past one local time. Well, it's five to two. Uh, and it's still dry, it must be a free app, but uh, you never know around here because the weather can change very, very rapidly. And there are one or two grey clouds overhead, but equally, the road is dry-ish as. This is how they're going to line up. Maxime Martin on pole position, Callan Williams for second, and then it's Frank Bird and Giacomo Altue, who was the fastest man in qualifying, but lost that lap for it being uh, under yellow flags and dropped to fourth ahead of Benjamin Goethe, who also got a grid drop. He is then fifth ahead of Charles Witt, Thierry Vermeulen, and Timo Bogoslavski, the championship leader, Matthew Drudy, starts ninth, the head of Lorenzo Petresi. Then it's Adam Atecki and Finley Hutchison, who's still in touch for gold honours. Christopher Meese, he's on row seven, alongside Ayrton Guven, who was a bit disappointing in qualifying. That car never gelled as we expected. Marco Mapelli and Christopher Haas are next. Then Ezekiel Kompak and Paul Evra ahead of Nico Barr and Maximilian Paul. Jean-Baptiste Simonau is on the 11th row with Sean Hudspeth for company. Then it is Alberto Di Folco, the gold championship leader with a lot of work to do compared to the BMW. Uh, Alex Frasinetti alongside, then it's Leonardo Moncini and Adrian Delina. Harley Horton will start uh, for the first time. He took over yesterday, the 18-year-old from Stockport alongside Owen Bastard. Then it is Patrick Kropitsky and Dean McDonald to complete the grid. Dean's good laps all lost to track limit offences. So the two McLarens quicker than their grid positions would suggest. So both McLarens potentially could have been locking up the front row of the grid, but because in some cases track limits, offences in other cases, it was to do with overspeeding in a yellow flag zone, and the penalties have had to be served. And Dean McDonald probably is the one who's lost out most because he's got, he potentially was a front row starter. Now he's the rear start is the slowest technically it wasn't the slowest but that's the way that timing and scoring worked out his best lap that wasn't deleted was his out lap more or less uh, when he went out for that 20 minute qualifying session in the wrt garage the uh, team that operates the bmws valentino rossi chats to his engineer but uh, there'll be nervousness all round not only in terms of the race but in terms of the number 30 car for the gold uh, cup so it's an all bmw front row which we don't say very often in GT World Challenge. This is the end of the first formation lap, and when they cross the line, they will keep going, and the clock will start, and then they will line up effectively the race start at the end of the second formation lap. So, effectively, the race is now underway, in as much as this counts within the time, as you can see from the clock. Thierry Vermeulen's view, this is the Tarzan hairpin, which has been catching out quite a few over the weekend. You arrive there very rapidly these days, don't you? Yeah, it's about 250 plus kilometers per hour. But looking not bad. I mean, you can see the, the, the line, the inside line, looks to me to be dry higher up, which sometimes drivers opt to take. I think that's got to be no man's land initially. And down to the Hogenholz hairpin, again, everybody running the low line. But come the race, you'll see a lot of cars running much higher. And the high line, if you can get that good exit speed can give you an advantage. The low line looks the quicker line. It's slightly shorter, but you don't get the speed that you do on the high line as you accelerate up through these curves all the way through the sand dunes up to Skyflet. I mean, saying it alone makes it sound an exciting corner, and it is an exciting corner. <laughs> yeah, turn seven doesn't have quite the same resonance, does it? So Maxi Martin will lead them around. He won with Valentino Rossi, of course, at Masano. And Timo Bogoslavski will be mindful that he needs to Keep ahead, or as close to number 40, Audi. Drudy knows he's got to try and get through the traffic. And with respect, I think Drudy will be the more attacking driver in this first stint. You would imagine he would be, and also he's on the sort of the the even side, sort of the, the odd side coming down into turn one, so he's got the inside line if he can retain that. It doesn't mean he's going to do so. He might move around depending on the slots open up. But at, this, at the minute, you would think. Uh, that if anybody's going to make a lunge or going to go for it, it's more likely to be Matteo Drudi than would assume that we would see Timo Bogoslowski doing so. But we'll know very shortly as we come up to the conclusion of this extra parade lap. Absolutely right. And this is Matteo Drudi's view then in the Attempto Racing Run Audi. The Arkin Arca's team, which made a name for itself initially in Porsche Racing. Big crowd overlooking the start and finish line, which is good to see. And they should be treated to a really fierce fight here, John. Yeah, and, and because it's a sort of an unusual, unexpected front row, second, third row of the grid, and I think it was Ricardo Feller alluded to it in the interview, that we've got people possibly 
further back in the grid to take the start than one would have expected. So it could be a very, very lively opening lap or laps. I would go along with that as Ricardo Feller and Matthew Drudy's Audi then, Matthew Drudy at the wheel starts to get itself into position, ready for this rolling start then. So they get themselves side by side and it is an awesome looking grid. 30 cars, the biggest uh, sprint cap entry that's ever been at Zandvoort and they are about to be unleashed with one or two dark horses for the race, which could of course take points away from those fighting for the championship. So there's an awful lot on the line here. For one last time, the pace car brings the field out of turn 14. Heading up towards the timing line then, Maxime Martin on pole position, Cannon Williams, the Australian, alongside him. The drivers then now focus on that lighting gantry. Alain Adon, the race director, if he's happy, will give the indication that we can get the race underway. There's a McLaren already trying to overtake in the background. Lights go green, it's race time, and it's Maxime Martin who blasts away into the knee down towards Tarzan. Where's Bogoslavski in all of this? He's staying ahead of the Audi, or is he? Yes, he is, but a contact for Drudy, but he couldn't find a way through the traffic, and Bogoslavski's done a good job there. He did a good job, but he had contact coming the exit of Tarzan, but consolidates, and that's the start that Bogoslavski needed, but he's now being overtaken, and I don't know if that was the 40 or that was Patrese's Audi that's got ahead. Certainly, one of the Audis has gotten yeah. ahead of Bogoslavski, Look at that, 32 squeezing, squeezing the McLaren coming up through and Vermeulen directly behind in the 69 Ferrari. I don't think it was uh, Drudy that got ahead of Bogoslavski, I think it was one of the two boots and VDS cars, so uh, conceivably Adam Atecki with a good start, but it's Martin leading from Frank Bird, Callum Williams is third, Vermeulen is fourth, Goethe is fifth, sixth side by side, Vermeulen and Wirtz, and here is Drudy, and there is Bogoslavski, so he has not yet cleared the Mercedes. No, but that was... Uh, I mean, the, the Audis were all very compacted going into Tarzan, so there is the view that Matteo Drudy has gone on the back of the Mercedes and to see the back moving around the Mercedes. Now Drudy thinks he can get a run, but he's going down. He needs to get ahead of the Mercedes under braking. Can he make it work? The Mercedes has got the... Oh, and up the inside! And Drudy's been turned round, I think. No, it's Bogoslavski that's gone round. Oh, Timo Bogoslavski hit, and he's hit again! Bodywork now, rear bodywork damage. That car will have to go into the pits. And that's it all over. But yeah, I think you're right. And I have a horrible feeling that the car that hit him was the silver class Audi of Patrese, which is run by the same team as Drudy's car. And that's going to get all sorts of conspiracy theorists on their toes, isn't it? So disaster for Timo Bogoslavski and Raffaele Marcello. Well, it had all occurred at the part of the racetrack that we noted this morning and qualifying was always going to be slippery and had to be really careful. And that may be just an example. I saw an Audi diving up the inside coming into the chicane and that then was what we saw rotating the 88 Mercedes so what a huge disappointment uh, in his Bogoslavski there and this now is Matthew Drudy on his way to winning a championship because the Mercedes is effectively out of the race uh, it won't be able to come back from that it will lose a lap at least and so ahead on points now it's going to be an easy drive to the championship but that I think was the aggressor there are other cars that have got damage. Look, coming down the pit lane. Yeah, one of the Hondas coming in as well. So that's the Mercedes effectively that's all over. You see bodywork rubbing, where it's ripped the rear, that carbon fiber and front as well. The yeah. right, left front. I mean, that's a cut, that's a tire cut down. That's it. That's game over. That's it. Is the suspension is gone oh, on the wow. left front? I mean, what a disappointment. And the radiator, right. likewise. You can see steam coming off the the front of the car. There is the bodywork. Oh, and that's the 99 for crazy. Right, we're going to get a safety car, aren't we? Because there's debris on the road, there's a car in the gravel. Now, that's significant in silver because Patrese has just put himself out of the silver contest. He's in the gravel and losing place after place after place. Safety car deployed. Safety car deployed here at Zandvoort there with debris on the road. Uh, with bits of car all over the place and cars in gravel traps as well. And you could see how disappointed Bogostowski was. And it wasn't his fault. He turned through the corner. He was just harpooned. Yeah, he was just, he was just in the middle. Of that essence of that chicane, and the Nardi dived on the inside. He was trying to defend from Drudy on the outside, so his focus was clearly on Drudy. Didn't even know probably the other Audi was coming down the inside, and then the contact and rotation, and the consequent bodywork and suspension damage to the 88 Mercedes. And so Maxi Martin leads Frank Bird who is also, of course, the leading silver, and with Patrese as good as out of the race now, anyway. Uh, Jordan Love looks like he can celebrate the silver title because the Mercedes now has managed to, if you like, see off all the opposition because Patrese there, even if he does rejoin, is going to be a lap down. 
but they're going to have to tow the car out of the gravel. Uh, Patrese furious, trying to get it back in, but the wheels are spinning, but he's going nowhere. Well, the car's beached, it's the, the belly of the car is stuck on the, the curbing, and then the gravel directly behind it, so there's eight going anywhere until he gets external assistance, and by which time he have lost at least one lap, if not more. So the one to watch when we go racing again is the car uh, in 16th place overall. It's number nine Audi of Alberto Di Folco, and he's got work to do in order to try and win the gold uh, championship, and he comes into it with Aurelien Panis as the Gold Cup leader, but it's got a lot of work to do to get through the traffic. So number nine Audi on the restart will be the real focus, because overall is clinched, and silver is as good as, with Patrese now a lap down and effectively out of the race. So all follow my leader. There's some of the bodywork from the Mercedes. There's lots of more that needs to be cleared, and that uh, is carbon fiber all over the place. Yeah, that's Honda bodywork as well in that collection. I think you're right, orange. Yeah. So uh, I think possibly, as, as uh, remember, we saw Bogdanowski having been turned around, being hit again uh, by Audis and by Hondas. So it was Nico Bart, Nicola Bart's uh, Audi that got involved, and the Honda of Alessandro Flasinetti. Riccardo Patrese, Lorenzo's dad, looks on and we'll have a thought or two about his son spinning it into the gravel, won't he? Well, if it was unassisted, then it's hard to understand, hard to explain. It may be that he did get tagged by another car, but would he ever seen the 99 Audi sitting in that position? We didn't see how it actually got there. So until we have got confirmation of that, we can't really give any judgment. Right, let's get through the replays then. This is the start, first of all. So Bogoslavski went one way, went the other and as they accelerated down towards turn one, you've seen that McLaren in the background of Dean McDonald, which had been a bit keen on its toes. That's being looked at for a jump start. But Martin led to turn one. So three abreast. You see the Mercedes is the meat and the Audi sandwich as they come through Tarzan. And then, well, this is the view on board from Ricardo Feller. A good start by Bogoslowski. He got a good momentum going. Then he got himself caught between one Audi in the left, one Audi in the right. And look behind him, he's got a, almost like a dodge of car event just bumping the back of the Mercedes and falls into line, the 99 follows through, and then again just coming up through at the back end, and there's contact there between the 99 and the 88, so that's where a lot of the, and again, Feller, I mean, I thought I saw contact on the opening lap live, and I don't know if he did tag him or not, but it was, it was, it was certainly only a very light kiss, there's the, the drone view. It's a great shot, that, and you'll see Bogoslowski in the middle, you're almost four abreast there, and a little nudge here and a nudge there, but it's coming out of the next corner where the back started to move. And was that the Porsche got turned round? I think you're right. I yes. didn't, we didn't see that live, but that was good. But, I mean, you're that right. was just a contact and just round it went. Again, on tyres, low temperatures, not very much grip. So if you lose that traction, the, or the car gets thrown sideways, it's going to continue. And there's the contact initially, and there's further contact. And what else? There was a Honda coming through. Well, yeah, the Honda hit the bar, yeah, Bart hit yeah. Bogoslowski, and it was Patrese that was the cause of all of that. So Bogoslowski, very, very disappointed. Broken suspension, broken car. He drags it back, but he knows they're out of the race oh, at this point. I mean, you, he did nothing to justify or no. warrant uh, his race ending this way. So Patrese, all on his own, the bite a bit. Yeah, and just, you can see the marks in the track where he tried to stick, you know, use the throttle to drive the car, or get it, to tighten its exit rather than have it running into the gravel, but in the course of doing so, and there we go. he's now got the car rolling, but he's, is that one lap or two laps he's now done? It must probably be two. Uh, two, it is two laps. Right. Yes, indeed. So he's back moving, but uh, he really now needs lots of the other silver class cars to have problems. Well, one has, because the Honda of Frasinetti is out of the race with its damage, but uh, I can't see him really catching 77 Mercedes from two laps back. He needs people to drop out of the race. So you've got a feel for Bogoslowski, a totally innocent party in all of that. And in fairness, it's not the way that Drudy nor Feller would want to win a championship, really. No, um, but opening laps and a track with mixed degrees of grip all the way around it. Events like this are always possible. So yeah. Bogoslowski was being challenged on the left by the idea of Matteo Drudy, and we saw then Lorenzo Patrese take a lunge down the inside, cut across the inside of the curve in the chicane, which is where the, the initial contact between the 88 and the 99 began. And once the Mercedes had been rotated, then there was nothing that Bogus could do, it was just a sitting duck. Yeah. So let's see, that is Drudy going down. 
to the left. Watch for Patricia. He's going to make this late lunge, and he comes on very late. Can't slow the car down. Dives to the inside, and at that point, tags the right rear of the 88 in the run. And then it just gets from bad to worse. To, you can't say there's no such word as worse, sir, is there? No. But if there was, that would be the definition of it. Here's how Drudy saw it all. And Drudy's sitting there. I mean, look, I mean, he was. And, what, did he have contact, or did it just avoid it by? You know, tiny time in mean, both contenders for the championship could have been out of the first lap. Absolutely. And from Drudy's point of view, he could have been taken out by his teammate. Right, safety car in at the end of this lap. So Maxime Martin leads the way. Championships, in a sense, now all done and dusted. Uh, certainly as far as Pro and Silver are concerned, but there's still a really good race to enjoy here because the order is a very, very jumbled one. But we're 13 minutes into the race and we've only had one racing lap, or had half a racing lap in effect. So at the end of this lap, the opening lap, then we went to full safety car. So there is Frank Bird in second place, leading the silver class by a margin. Yuzuki Alpera's compact is the nearest challenger in terms of positions in that class. He's done in 12th position. And Frank Bird has missed two events in the championship. That's why he has a different point score from uh, that of Jordan Love, but it's Jordan Love heading for the title and in gold at the moment. Callum Williams and Nicholas Cruton are ahead of Alberto Di Folco and Aurelian Panis. That's what I was saying earlier. The number nine Audi is the one to watch to see what progress it can make up the order as we are set to go racing once more. The Hap racing team there that operates the Lovebird Mercedes. Jordan Love and Frank Bird, they get ready to look on as the green flag is ready on the start line. The safety car in this time. In the background, the voice of the race director, Alan Adol, say green flag, we're back racing, and over the line they come to complete lap six, and Maxime Martin has gone, and Callum Williams then in the next of the BMWs comes up on the outside of Frank Bird into Tarzan with fourth, Giacomo Altway. Yeah, so that was a nice start, a good restart up on the outside, the 32 BMW trying to get on terms of the McLaren, but also now in itself on the boots, and now he's getting up on the inside, but... No, couldn't quite get the job done that. I mean, the, the drone trying to keep up with these cars coming out of the Hogan Hulls happen as Maxi Martin just gallops away up through the dunes. There is Charles Williams then going after Benjamin Goethe, who just gets better and better and better in that McLaren that he shares with Nikolai Schiergaard, and that has been a, a competitive car all weekend. So let's see what can shake out of the race for that. But Maxi Martin is clearing off into the distance, and the next car yeah, in that one, class... One, one. Five second time <coughs> penalty to be taken at the big start for jump start. Steve McDonald then, jump start, five second penalty, says race director Alain Adon. Uh, yeah, Martin leading from pro, and the second pro cup car is only fourth. There it is, Giacomo Altuay's Ferrari. Yeah, and that's a very comfortable position right now for Maxi Martin. He's got clear road ahead of him, he can do whatever he wants, place his car wherever he chooses, and he is basically the quickest car in the field all the same, all the end. Frank Bird in the second place in the silver category car is uh, matching him virtually uh, segment for segment. Lorenzo Patrese is back in the race, so he will score points. So it's not quite done and dusted yet, but as long as the Frank Bird, Jordan Love and Sadie stays on the road, they're, they're looking very, very strong indeed. So champions elect. As over the line goes Maxime Martin. 1.6 seconds clear of Bird as wins. Makes a dive on the inside of Goethe. But no way through there. Things better already. Yeah, so it seems just that little bit too far behind. But he's going to harry uh, Benjamin Goethe all the way. Keep the driver looking backwards rather than thinking about what can I do to make some progress. Can get on terms with Giacomo Altre and the Ferrari directly ahead of me in fourth place. It's a sharp wit view there towards the from Slotemacher Bocht, the great Dutch touring car racer, race instructor here, had the skid pan, and uh, was a very successful Alfa Romeo touring car racer amongst other brands in his time. Weird, out of turn seven then. Over the rise, short straight, set the car up for eight, flick right. Yeah, so, so you, you arrive at turn ten really quickly, you come out of Sky Clock, and there's a short run, and it really is a short run before you have to get on the brakes down a, curve, a gear to flick to the right, then you've got a short straight before you come into turn nine and then the run back sort of almost within the circuit up to turn 10 and then again another shortish straight but an, an overtaking opportunity but be careful because this is the part of the track we saw that incident in the opening lap occur the track will be getting better by the minute maybe even by the second so grip will be increasing as well as tire temperatures also giving that additional bite Maxime Martin is the bravest man coming out of turn 14. You can look down from the drone and see him there just on the right of screen. 
here up towards the line, 202 kilometers an hour, and he breaks the beam now to complete the lap. Eight in the book, and he's done the fastest lap of the race, 134.630. Bird leading silver, second. Williams leading gold, third. Battle on here, look, because you've got Jean-Baptiste Simonard versus the Lamborghini of Marco Mapelli, and also in the midst of all of that is 21 Audi of Finley Hutchison, but Mapelli clears the Audi. Yeah. Billy Hutchinson had a good qualifying and the 16 lap beginning further down than I had anticipated. Likewise, the 31 BMW. I mean, BMW is interesting. Of course, that tyre gone down on one of the Butson cars. It is, and this is significant, isn't it? In Ateki. gold, because the one that is in the pit lane is Adam Ateki, yesterday's winner. And that's quite some damage on the tyre, isn't it? Now, yes, how, what's caused that? And well, although there's been I mean, we've seen a lot of bodywork on the circuit, whether he's cut it down on a piece of carbon fiber, or sometimes if you're over-aggressive on the use of curbing, you can catch the edge of the curb, and that will also cut a tire down. We don't know. Whatever it is, it's in the pits, and that's a big setback. Here we go. There's debris on the track oh, in turn that's 14, and that's why. I've never seen a car in my years of coming here, and that was a big... Wow, he was lucky he didn't get T-boned. Yeah. So there's debris on the track, and was it a spin? into the wall and a puncture was the result or a punctured tyre that caused the spin? Well, I think if you give the benefit of the doubt, it would be a punctured tyre that caused the spin, I would say, because it's not normal to see a car lose control of that part of the final corner. Uh, the, the load going through the corner does increase and increase, but that was just about midway through the exit of turn 14. Now, you were riding a moment ago with Matthew Drudy, seven, staring at the back of Charles Witts. Down through Tarzan, they turn. Maxime Martin, three seconds to the good, so Valentino Rossi, when he gets into the car, he's going to be given a pretty healthy lead. All depends on the pit stops. It does. You, you've got to come in, you've got to make your mark, you've got to stop precisely so the team can get to the car. You heard Ricardo Feller say yesterday, when he made his pit stop, he overshot because the pit lane was damper than the racetrack, and he was judged the level of grip under braking, even as only doing 50 kilometres per hour. We understand that there is heavy rain coming, so uh, the dry... Oh, there, at turn one at the Tarzan <laughs> hairpin, it's not just coming, it's come, and they're about to go into a wall of rain, and the engineers are going to have to be on the radio warning the drivers. Biblical! Absolutely unbelievable. And we're just in our commentary booth, there's now hammering down on the window of the commentary booth, so it's just come in literally in a heartbeat. There's no warning whatsoever. But the drivers will be being told, as you point out, David, on the radio, be aware the track is going to be absolutely saturated. Uh, John's telling you untruths. It's not rain, it's hail. Up the inside goes Goethe on the inside, and he leans on Altway, forces him off the road, but he's wet there as well. So they're struggling for traction. And now the racetrack is completely different, and the bravest now are going to shine. But look how greasy, how treacherous it is, and it's only going to get worse at the end of the pit straight. Although that said, that heavy rain that John was talking about bouncing off our window for the moment has stopped. But Martin now has a track surface, and they're on slick tyres, presumably, going down towards Tarzan that is completely different from a lap ago. Well, you can see how wet it is, particularly on the runoff area just beyond the entry into Tarzan. And Mark, Maxi Martin, leader. race leader's off, and Frank Bird has taken the lead, and the second-place BMW has now become... Well, well, they've swapped positions, so Maxi Martin got caught out. The most experienced driver of the lead three gets caught out at Tarzan. And that is something that you do not see very often, so Valentino Rossi's car falls to third. It's still leading its class. But that just underlines how treacherous it is. Of course, Martin was always going to be the pioneer. He was the first one on the scene, and it caught him out. And this battle continues. Uh, Goethe was ahead of Altwe. Altwe goes back ahead of him. Yeah, I mean, a lot of courage involved in making an overtake. And so who's gone off? Oh, it's the cameraman. I think just trying to catch up with all the action. So the Ferrari has found its way around. The... Oh, somebody did go up. Bird. That's Frank Bird. Yeah. Right, so that puts Callum Williams in the lead. It puts Maxi Martin back up ahead, and Frank Bird loses one, two, three places out of all of that. He's making one of them back up again because <laughs> he gets the undercut on Benjamin Goethe. Goethe's going to take the very long way around. Sometimes in these conditions, on slick tires, you might find a bit more bite, but look at Altwe. So, Valentino Rossi getting prepared. We are three minutes away from the pit window opening, and will teams take the opportunity if these conditions don't change? And look at the Goethe is having real struggles getting traction on the McLaren. Every time he puts the throttle on those twin turbo V8, they just spool up and spin the wheels. 
there has been much talk in the paddock given the conditions this weekend. What are we doing here in October? Well, what we're doing here is watching great racing because the weather is spicing it up out of the race uh, with Bastar in the Santa Lock Audi. He is in the gravel, but the weather conditions, fickle as they are, have given us drama and action all weekend, and we're not done yet. No, I mean, we're thinking it's wonderful. The audience is loving it. <laughs> Think about the poor teams having to deal with these conditions. Now, the race leaders come up towards the line, and this is where the whole pit stop strategy starts to become even more fascinating. Because if you come in at the start of the window, the chances are that you might go on the wrong choice of tyre, wet or slicks. You need to hang it out for, to, to the end of the window if you can, and we're about to go full course yellow with that Audi in the gravel. Yeah, OK, so that's going to be fortuitous for everybody because the pace will slow down. It's just looking out of our broadcast window, the rain appears to have stopped but the racetrack as you can see it's not it's not wet it's more it's that slick and that's a horrible kind of yeah. condition for any kind of tire where well, certainly a, a dry weather slick does not like it and even a full wet weather tire isn't comfortable on it because it likes water that it can grip and actually give it the, the performance the tire is designed for well that's callum williams who is leading the race with nicholas cruton and they are from the gold cup Behind is Maxime Martin, he's the man with the slightly red face now, having been off the road and uh, into the gravel. And then behind in third place is Giacomo Altue. Fourth, Frank Burt, who is another driver who has been off the road. Fifth is Benjamin Goethe. Now, by the end of the lap, the pit window could be open, but it then depends whether they are prepared to bail now and get the stop out of the way, but risk a second stop if the conditions change again. But the other factor is it may be the the teams, the cars at the tail of the field might be the only ones given. It just depends where when 35 minutes, the clock clicks to 35 minutes, where you are on the racetrack. So, will Callan Williams looks like he's going to be able to get it. The, the yeah. window will be open by the time he gets onto the start finish straight. So, any of the teams, any of the cars that are running, and we've got 26 cars, 27 actually, including Al Mateki, but that looks like it's not going anywhere. Um, to make an option to come in early. Procedure will remain during the full pit window. Full course yellow procedure will remain during the full pit window. OK, so that means we're going to have a, a very long 10-minute full course yellow. And the reason for doing that, one assumes, is so that nobody is disadvantaged, because some could pit under full course yellow, some could pit under safety car, and it will be a different situation. So Alain Adon, the race director, is trying to level that playing field for everybody. And what can only say that's giving everybody an equal chance. And Ricardo Feller, you'd see the BMW just again under acceleration and snapped. So Charles Veyard struggled to keep the back of the car in control and it didn't take Matteo Drudi a second invitation to slot up along and it passed the 32 RD. Uh, BMW. So Callum Williams leads the field and the pit window is open and in he will come. Now, what about Maxi Martin? Maxi looks like he's going to carry on for one more lap. And the majority, in fact, carry on for one more lap. I think the reason they're doing it is because they believe they're not losing anything in these conditions. And if the track conditions continue to improve, and actually there's a bit of blue sky appearing directly above us, but so, well... I mean, how many, some teams in WRT are running three cars, you wouldn't want a triple stack. I mean, we've seen double stacking from teams yeah. in the past, but triple stacking, I think, even for WRT and their brilliance and pit stops, well, they've got a double stack going on. So we've got the 32 in, and the three four get behind the wheel of that. I don't think it's personnel, I think it's space that would be the deciding factor. Uh, you see how wet it is in the pits as a way slithers Nicholas Crutton. So Maxi Martin stays out. Now, the other reason for staying out, never mind the logistics of the pit stop, is to try to work out what the weather is doing at the end of the window. Uh, and then you could make the gamble on tyres for a shorter period of the race. We understand from the camera guys who've had a pretty miserable weekend and our compliments go to them for their service uh, that it has stopped raining trackside so therefore the road should dry given the uh, strength of the wind here so the bulk of the field has opted to come in and uh, make that change so still on wet weather tires from what we can see on the bmw it's the yellow sidewall tire will be the designated slick tire and that's 
not a yellow sidewall tower on the number 30 BMW. And what, what does, let's see what Maxi Martin is. Is he going to come in or is he going to hang it out until the last conceivable moment? There is a wet weather tower. Okay, so the wets are ready, and Maxi Martin then leads on the road once again uh, from Giacomo Altue, who stayed out. So I expect another wave of cars in this time. And John is right, the uh, break in the clouds is evident again, so the road wet will potentially dry, uh, and uh, the blue skies over bits of Zambor rather trick the drivers into thinking that it's, uh, it's a dry circuit, but it most assuredly is not now. Well, I mean, you could be a bit clever with your phraseology and say, is this requiring a bit of blue sky thinking? Oh, I like it. I see what you did there. A little bit of segue. <laughs> well, Maxime Martin leads the field, paddling his way now down through the Hans Ernst Bocht, and the draggled fans over the pit lane wait for the next group of cars to come in. There is... Uh, Consolapalainen getting ready to take over from Giacomo Altue in the now second-placed Ferrari. Frank Bird there will give way to Jordan Love. Benjamin Goethe will give way to Nikolai Kiergaard. And, of course, Matteo Drudy to give way to Ricardo Falla. They just need to keep going now to win the championship. Just you can see the remains of bodywork from the Audi when it spun. Uh, they've got to clear that also while it's not on a racing line but it doesn't need to be left. It's a part of the racetrack that's hard to access uh, with cars you know, going around. OK, they're going around at 80 kilometres per hour. Martin but stays out. Indeed. And that's uh, Owen Bastar, who has also stayed out. So he's been pulled out of the gravel, but it's carrying on, by the look of it, dropping liquid and uh, not pitting. Well, the bodywork also is damaged. You can see heavily around the front, front splitter. So, and there and he's had his spin. So, under a full course yellow, I think he's spun on his own liquid, possibly. And Erwin Bastar now is in danger of blocking the circuit because he doesn't want to go forward into the gravel. He's going to have to do a three-point turn, and I think the officials might want a word with him for that. Well, I think he may well need to come in. If he can make it right for one more lap, let alone he may not have any option. And so there is Ricardo Feller getting on board. The Portiardi, Matteo Rudy has done his job, and Maxi Martin opted to stay out. He's got another just about five minutes, just over five minutes, to determine when he will have to make that mandatory stop. So all the time he's uh, trying to maintain position for Valentino Rossi. What he would like, of course, is for as many cars to keep circulating to help to try to move some of the water away so it's a drier road when Valet gets into the car. Now, there, look, you've got Ricardo Feller up ahead of the... Ferrari, so that means then that Consta Lapalainen is going to be ahead of Dries Van Thor in the number 32 red BMW. Once all the pit stops have cycled through, we'll have a, a clearer idea of the order. And this, number 30, uh, is the BMW Callum Williams, now Nicholas Crutton, that is the best placed of those that have made their regulation pit stop. So effectively, this is the race leader, depending on where Valentino Rossi will bleed back in after he has taken over number 46. But of the cars that have made the regulation pit stop, this is the best place. So what a result this could be for the 30 BMW. I mean, to be able to start where they did start, I mean, it's just fantastic on the front row of the grid. Really excellent qualifying effort and, and difficult conditions. And now find yourself in the lead having made your pit stop. And we've now got just under 30 minutes of the race remaining. So, and the track again, oh, this is run the far end up to the exit of Skyflock into turn eight or probably no as better as Master Bock. And you can see there's more water there than there may be when they get towards the completion of the lap coming through turn 14. And Alex Arca is ready to take over number 99, but that car effectively two laps down. So you've got Ricardo Feller there going through ahead of Lapaline and ahead of uh, Van Thor and then Jordan Love. So 77 has fallen back in the queue, hasn't it, on the pit stops there? Well, um, th I think their key is not so much overall position as actually the, in the Silver Cup. So sure, yeah. Technically, that's their focus. I mean, anything else is a bonus, but the reality is stick to what your game plan is and make sure that's what you attain. Big cheer when Valentino Rossi walked into the pit lane there, ready to take over number 46, the team manager of the... Arca Patrese Audi being summoned to the stewards for the contact with Boguslawski. In comes Martin 
In comes Basta, in also comes Benjamin Goethe. Yes, so... Uh, actually, might try and get some time to represent 50 kilometers per hour on this frees up the shoulder straps does not do the seat belt that's a no-no so have they got bits of body work yes they seem to have cleared bits of the idea that we're hanging up high so Valentino opens the door assists Maxima out in the pops and then it's the reverse process attach your radio attach what other bits and pieces you need to do six part six piece safety harness and then there's a, a safety curtain which is there being fine as the thing well, where is it no, there's a safety curtain on the outside. So there he is on the on the move, but Rossi is going to drop back behind Callum Williams, Nicholas Crutton's car. So Crutton will lead. Rossi potentially to be second, and then Ricardo Feller for third place. So, I mean, I suppose you could say did the 46 stay out? Maybe one lap or two laps too many, or was there really little option because the WR team are already servicing? two of their cars simultaneously. So the, the right of who would be first in would have been the 46 in my book. Well, I was going to say, I think it's where he was anyway, because hadn't number 30 put itself in the lead after Maxime went off the road? Could be, that's so it. Yeah, I, I, right. th I think 30 had jumped ahead, because uh, we had Maxime Martin off, we had Frank Bird off, and that put Callum Williams into the lead. Uh, so effectively, track position is restored. 30 was ahead of 46 before the pit stops, and it is again. You've also just seen the safety car on the track. That means that we will, to get the restart, go to safety car procedure to let them have quicker laps and therefore get the tire temperatures up. Equally, that'll bunch the field up. So Valentino Rossi could have a go at getting the race lead away here from Nicholas Crutton uh, on the restart. Yeah, but I have to say, the 30 BMW has done a really excellent job throughout the weekend, as has the 46. So for Valentino Rossi to challenge his sister car and um, make an overtake that's going to stick without getting into contact with it. He needs to be absolutely clear in his own mind what's possible. Championship-wise, Matteo Drudi and Ricardo Feller now going to the uh, second half of the race as champions elect in the overall situation. Matteo Drudi, Ricardo Feller with the retirement of Rafael Marcello and Timo Bogoslavski. So there, the Audi drivers are set to win in the Pro Cup. We now go safety car. Safety car procedure, safety car procedure. Okay. That means that the pace can quicken and the drivers then will get behind the safety car. Except that the safety car needs to pick up Nicholas Critton. Well, this has been behind Critton all the way through, so down to the chicane, so he's not going to take any chances to slide up the inside. He'll get ahead of Cruton, I would imagine, on the exit, and then that will clear off and the race will get underway once the safety car's heading towards pit lane. Jordan Love is heading to the Silver Cup, clear of Patrese and Arca, as the safety car now moves ahead of BMW number 30. So Jordan Love with the blue BMW, which is there. He is the Silver Cup champion elect, just going to bring it home after Lorenzo Patrese's spin, and the penalty might be coming in that car's way anyhow after the incident earlier on with the Mercedes. Still bits of debris yeah. on the road up at 14. Yeah, I thought that had been cleared, but clearly it hasn't, so it's still remaining on track. So it's been deemed not to be really a hazard, and this race will continue behind the safety car for a further lap. And I assume at the end of this lap that we'll see the safety car back into the pit lane. And in gold, Cameron Williams and Nicholas Critton leading the race, they're also leading the gold championship, and then the title looks like it is going their way. So the safety car now is ahead of number 30, BMW, so we've got the correct order on track. You can see Ricardo Feller in third place, ahead of Lapalina, Van Thor running in fifth, Jordan Love sixth, Nicolai Schiergaard seventh, and McLaren's dropped back, hasn't it, on the stops. Eighth is Andrea Caldarelli's Lamborghini, ninth is Thomas Neubau's Mercedes, and 10 for the second silver cup car. Yes, it's Alman Aldio, the Finn, having taken over from uh, Ezequiel Perez Compank. There's still a few drivers just outside of Shield Magnus and the 21 RD, uh, Albert Costa and the 69 Ferrari. Those are two drivers one would assume are capable of making progress getting into that top 10. But clock ticking away, 23 minutes remaining. Track conditions still for wet weather tyres. And if you take sprint and endurance points together, uh, Rafael Marcello and Timo Bogoslavski would win the championship from Matteo Drudi and Ricardo Feller. Of 
course, there are differing numbers of points on offer in the endurance races, depending on whether it's a three or a six or a 24 hour race. Uh, and so uh, as the safety car is due in at the end of this lap to get us back racing, uh, there is some consolation heading the way of Boris Lasky and Marcello, which is that uh, the overall title is heading their way, subject to confirmation. Just an interesting question. Has Nicholas Cruton ever been the car, the lead car in a safety car chain? Will it be the first time he's taken? Uh, he was the race winner last year in the German Championship, so I think no, it's, it's not alien to him. It's been interesting to see how he copes. Uh, he and Callum Williams looking good for the overall gold title as well, as you've just seen on the graphic. But now, from memory, he, when he was winning at the Red Bull Ring last year, there was a, a safety car interruption. So, yeah, it's not new to him. Alex Arca, Lorenzo Petrezzi look as though they are going to be the combined silver champions. And away they turn now with the green flag ready to wave. And Ricardo Feller is on his toes. Yeah, he's going to look to find a way around. Valentino Rossi, but good restart by Cruton. He's got a good advantage over second base Rossi. Feller can't do anything with the BMW currently and looking to get up the inside console lap a line in it. And he's just about to sneak through. There's Feller again. Just he's been quite rightly not taking a risk because that was marginally thought if you want to stick your nose up the inside and take the chance in dry conditions you might do it but in these conditions think about it and wait until there's a better opportunity it's also raining down our part of the circuit not heavily but a bit more rain is falling as ricardo fella hustles on behind valentino rossi big challenge this for valentino of course to try to hang on to the place and in greasy conditions but he goes wide at turn seven the audi ducks up the inside rossi sideways hangs on to it good good racing but now ricardo feller lines up at turn eight and goes through or does he because rossi on the outside line finds a bit of traction they go toe to toe down towards turn nine eventually ricardo feller goes through but valentino rossi tries to stand his ground on the inside line but he can't quite do it so Ricardo Feller up into second place and an outright race win beckons because the Audi is flying. Absolutely, so he's cleared one of the BMWs just directly behind Ricardo Feller. Now as Valentino Rossi is the 32 and Dries van Thor, somebody again who is so experienced, so good in these conditions. Expect to see further progress from van Thor presently in fourth. And in the background, Charles Witt, Dries Van Thor's car, Van Thor at the wheel of it, looking to gain places as well. Ricardo Feller, really brave on the outside, finds the traction, drives right round the outside of Nicholas Cruton. Brilliant move. Yes, really well executed overtake. Took commitment and courage to do that on a tricky part of the racetrack, but went the long way around, got the speed, had just had more speed going into the corner, and was able to carry it all the way through the exit. And now has taken the lead, and I would assume be able to comfortably pull away from the BMW as these two. We've got all three WRT BMWs now, second, third, fourth. So you're looking from Vantor's point of view, this is where the experience counts, doesn't it? And with respect to Rossi, he doesn't have anything like the experience of others in racing in these conditions. So uh, it's a bit of a step into the unknown, but the car is still there or thereabouts on the back of number 32. So Vanthor goes through into third place. It's Audi from BMW, 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 then Jordan Love fifth. What can he do about Rossi now? And another good battle pack here. Christian Klee trying to make progress through all the traffic as well in number 111. McLaren, he's on the back of Simon Gachet's car right now. Gachet also looking very fleet of foot as well. 71, Sean Huntsman's car now. Nicola Marinagelli at the wheel of it in that queue of cars likewise. Everybody trying to find a bit of space, a bit of traction, and a big, big dive up the inside there uh, by a charging Lauren Heinrich in the number 44 Porsche delayed on that one. Yeah, he's, he's again using any bit of the racetrack that's being offered up to him that hasn't got a car in the space. So... I mean, just, just watching how those cars are getting in the exit. So you've got the ID and the BMW down into the chicane. Gilles Magnus on the tail of Thomas Neubauer. This is for ninth overall. And Neubauer in the overall category. Magnus in gold and the Audi looking good. Yeah, I was going to say here the same situation almost as a lap ago we saw. Uh, Ricardo Feller, but not quite capable of doing But this time gets the undercut, gets under the BMW. But again, the high line over the, of the bank curve gives the BMW a little, sort of a second wind as it were. And now to wait and see what can happen. So Gilles Magnus charging, he's got the 
uh, Mercedes of Jesse Starman Audio behind him, and there in turn, Albert Costa in 12th place. And the 69 Ferrari dropped a long way down in the opening stint, but Costa then is on the inside line trying to wriggle up past the Gilles Magnus Audi that's been put off its line. So Magnus drops back behind the Mercedes and now the Ferrari. It's, he was out manoeuvred, and no contact between the Ferrari and the Audi. Has that tagged the right rear tyre of the Audi? On board with Albert Costa now running behind the mad Panda Mercedes. So Costa won again, you'd expect with his natural speed, he could find a way through and get ahead of the 90 Mercedes. But in tricky conditions, visibility is not brilliant. You can see that misty rain on the windscreen as he bumps and bounces his way through turn eight. For Albert Costa throwing everything at this to try to get that car up the order. They've had second places, but no wins, which is a bit of a surprise given the brain stress at Emil Frey Racing. Still making progress, Larry Heinrich in number 44. There, Christian Klein in 111. He's going backwards. The McLaren struggling in the conditions. So it looks very wet at the back part of the circuit as Costa now lines up to have a go at Simon Alkio coming in two turns. 11 and 12, but he can't find a way by there. Gilles Magnus, number 21, Audi hustles off. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand how Magnus. He looked like he was beginning that manoeuvre, then he's just suddenly coming through turns two and three, found himself shuffled back in the pack, and wherever he looked, there's a car above him, a car below him, and then that was that little contact with the back of the Ferrari as well. So the leader goes by, Ricardo Feller is two seconds clear of Nicholas Crutton, and this is the perfect way to win a championship, isn't it, to win the race as well. Second is Crutton, third Van Tor, fourth Rossi, fifth Jordan Love, silver champion elect, sixth Lapanainen, seventh is Calderelli, eighth is Giergaard, ninth is Neubauer, tenth is Simon Altio, and Porsche 44 there of Laren Heinrich, 16th over the line, 15th coming out of Tarzan. Yeah, and it's just on a charge, and it'll be almost... Trying to get car by car by car. The next one will be Lucas Legere in the number 11. So up the inside, Heinrich. Is he going to? Oh, look at, the, look at the look at the traction the Porsche had coming off the Hugenholz heaven. The good old-fashioned hang the engine out over the back axle. Porsche, 60 odd years of development over design, and still a car that you wouldn't mind being behind the wheel of. Absolutely right. And Heinrich specialises in those cars. Carrera Cup Germany champion. So uh, he's trying to make as good a progress as he can. And a turn seven, short run, up over the curb there, Nicola Maramangeli, for a quick single-seater convert. He, in turn, is ahead of the Marcus Pavarud driven Lamborghini. He's also had a silver-class race win during the course of the year. Feller getting away, but now Van Thor is closing on Crutton for second place. Yeah, and I would imagine... I mean, in fairness, Crutton has done a great job all year, but you'd have thought that certainly Dries Van Thor, having, you know, got himself into a position where he can smell a, a podium, which he will be on, currently he's third, but he can sniff a second place. The Cruton car, of course, is running in that gold category, so if the team wanted to put the 32 ahead of the number 30, same family, same management, same brand, it wouldn't hurt the team, but it might not be what either Cruton would like or an urban tour would like. So Valentino Rossi then. Hanging on to fourth spot. Uh, in relatively clear air, so he's he's got the Mercedes. Yeah, Jordan Love to behind him, and he's got what about two seconds of gap between himself and the sister car, Dries Van Thor. And again, the sun beginning to break through. Don't seem to see any more rain falling around in any parts of the circuit, but the track you see still enough spray to come off the rear of the cars. Uh, Rossi goes wide at seven there, but he finds a bit of traction. Ricardo Feller, Matteo Drudi could be the season's first double winners. No combination have won both races of a weekend in Sprint Cup. They could turn that around here to win the championship in perfect style. We've got uh, 13 and three quarter minutes to go. And inch by inch, Van Thor is getting nearer to Nicholas Crutton then. So that margin coming down, second to third. In a sense, Crutton could afford to let him go because he's still going to win the Gold Cup. Doesn't need to have a battle that could uh, put him in jeopardy. And you never know, c if he were to let Van Thor go through, could Van Thor do anything at all about the Audi? It's a big ask, and the lap time is not suggesting so. But if he can put the pressure on, Feller might make a tiny mistake. Well, I think that the likelihood of, if, I'm assuming that Van Thor might get through to second, whether it's a, a team plan or whether he can do it on track, so simply on pace, but to try and run down the Audi 
The gap was 2.6 seconds when it came across at the end of lap 20. It's up to now. And we're to reset on timing and scoring. It's for well, 2.7. It's virtually a tenth of a second gain uh, for Ricardo Fellow over the second place BMW crew. So there, number 14, Constellapalainen, sixth he is. He's got Andrea Calgarelli, former Sprint Cup, Endurance Cup champion as well, behind him, having taken over from Marco Mapelli. It's going to be an interesting four-way battle with Rossi, Love, Lapalainen and Calderelli. Those four cars are beginning to concertina together, and you can see just the back of the Ferrari snapping as it caught the wet curb on the exit, and that'll give Andrea Calderelli, uh, it was Lapalainen, and I uh, will give Calderelli um, hope that maybe I, if I apply more pressure, I might see more little errors creeping in to the Ferrari directly in front of me. The pit stop of Valentino Rossi, Maxime Martin, the fastest of the race. So the mechanics of number 46 BMW have won the pit stop challenge. And there is Andrea Calderelli then pressing on in seventh place. And the change for Sackner's happened. Van Thor is ahead of Crutton. So the WRT make the switch. And now Van Thor sets off in pursuit of the race leader. In Tunisia, team work. And nothing wrong with it. No, indeed. And uh, Nicholas Crutton way, way clear as far as gold is concerned. The next gold car is Gilles Magnus, 12th. So he is well ahead, although an incident between Van Thor and Lapalainen on the restart after the safety car is under investigation. So this is the four-way battle anticipated at the beginning of the lap, and it's, again, just you can see now how close the Ferrari is to the 10. I think the Ferrari is going to drive underneath Jordan Love, and he's done so without any hesitation whatsoever, and I think Andrea Calderelli had fancy a bit of that as well, because that was a, a, a relatively straightforward and, I would say, easy overtake. Calderelli comes down the inside, which is going to get alongside Love up to the does. Again, well, Love will take the long way round, which, and Calderelli now the undercut, but he's done enough, and I think Jordan Love also felt, well, He's not my race, why do I need to race him? Exactly, so let him go, keep out of trouble, the team will be on the radio, this is not your fight. Calderelli then released, he goes after Lapalainen. And just over ten and a half minutes to go. And this in replay is how uh, Van Thor was given second spot, Nicholas Crutton doesn't put up a huge defence. No, and I think that, I mean, as I say, there's communication between driver and pits. Oh, oh, Valentino, what was that all about? That is about turn seven, and it's dropped in behind Jordan Love, so it's put him into seventh place, eighth place now. Remember, Valentino had been taking that very long, wide line, and I wonder, is that why he got caught out just at the very exit of the corner? Let's have a look on board. Here we are coming up into Sky Flock. He was taking that long way. Yeah, he just, he just run. He just has got no traction whatsoever, and just hanging on by the skin of his teeth. He gets the car back on track, but the process loses another position. So Calderelli then had already gone by, so it's going to be Lapaline in fourth, Calderelli fifth, Love sixth, and so seventh, yes, for Valentino Rossi. A uh, big frustration, really, after leading early on with Maxime Martin at the wheel of that car, but in fairness, Maxime went off as well. Yes, and he did, but Maxime Martin, of course, initially had the lead of the race. He was driving in his own air, in his own space. Valentino, was, he was under pressure. These three cars had been catching him. And around the back of the circuit, if you choose a particular line, you have to be sure that when you get to the conclusion of the corner, you're still on the tarmac and not running off track. So now in the Pro Cup, this is the fight for third and fourth, where we have got Conta Lapalina and Andrea Calderelli, their fourth and fifth overall. There's another move on the cards, possibly here. Look, Gilles Magnus on the back of the queue with Thomas Neubauer, and also Larin Heinrich ahead. Heinrich's into the top ten, and Neubauer goes wide, and Magnus jumps ahead of him, but Heinrich's having a great run. Well, I've seen a Porsche driven well, and that's a very well-driven Porsche here today to get that car up into the top ten. Another overtake has just taken place. 15-second time penalty to car 99. The Tracy's gone. 15 yeah. seconds time penalty for car 99, added to the final racing time for causing a collision with car 88. So he doesn't do anything at all for the Mercedes drivers, but it is a penalty. Yeah, and that's a great shame, because the, the, the one that was the perpetrator got a 15-second penalty, which is nothing in reality, and the one, the, the innocent victim, one might say, uh, Bogoslowski, out of the race and out of the championship. Calderelli's having a charge, isn't he? He's right there on the back of Lapalina. 
pushing on as we are into the last eight minutes of the race pretty much now. Feller to Vanthor is 3.6 seconds and last time Dries was fractionally quicker. Calderelli comes into the hands of Ernst Bock. Now eight minutes of counting. Yes. But we don't have, wait. Andrea Cal Calderelli, what, three, four seasons ago, this car, the 63 Lamborghini, when he was running his own team, just dominated the championship virtually won every race. And then he's been over in America doing racing there, and it's great to have him back. And again, you can see why he and the Lamborghini were such a devastating package. Super slow-mo shots of the lead car. Ricardo Feller bouncing over the curb, water trickling off the side of it. Still very wet out there. Well, that just gives you an indication how much moisture that still is on the circuit. So that's just coming off the, the rear, the left rear. But Calderelli really, really, really going to give Lavalan in a hard time. Seven minutes and 18 seconds to go. He's got the pace, and we saw a lap or so ago the Ferrari got slightly loose on the exit. This time, a much better exit from Lavalan and, and uh, but Calderelli, head down, determined racer. Consul Apollinen is somebody else that's got better and better and better over his time in GT3 racing. Andrea Calderelli, as John has been saying, with his star studded CV. Multiple race and title winner, British GT race winner, first time he came to race at Donington, won there, and uh, now getting onto the back of the Ferrari then. So it's Lapalainen ahead of Calderelli as they come through, almost together. Behind, Jordan Love under attack from Valentino Rossi. The race still has six and a half minutes in it, and the gap down by another tenth against the two race leaders, but I think Feller is driving within himself. Well, what Feller, I would imagine, is doing, he's driving at the pace that Van Thor is driving at, he doesn't need, I mean, he's got a three-second advantage. If anything happened, that's another matter, but as things at face value, he doesn't need to do any more than he's doing, so just bring the car home, maintain that three-second advantage, and you'll be the champion. This is the Nikolai Schiergaard McLaren under attack for the Porsche of Larin Heinrich, who's got two wheels in the gravel there, bodywork hanging off the front. It's a well-used car, that, but he's absolutely got it by the scruff of the neck. Yeah, that bodywork damage happened at the exit of, of Tarzan on that opening lap, so it's been flapping, and look at the rear as well. There's got a flap at the rear as well as a flap at the front. So McLaren, Porsche, Audi then up towards the line. And it's another look in super slow-mo. Look, he's got two wheels in the gravel. And then have a look on the right-hand side. What, look at the bodywork at the front and at the back. And that's a lot of bodywork damage. And you can see it's almost it's almost ready to split and come away. So yeah. that's something you need to be keep an eye on. OK, we've got five and a half minutes of this race remaining, but what you don't particularly want is to have a chunk of the bodywork on the front of the Porsche to detach and, uh, and look all over the back of the McLaren. And this is where the Porsche was very good a few laps ago. We just seem to have better traction than anybody around. But on this occasion, the McLaren, maybe with the track beginning to dry a little bit, the drying line out of Hogan Hoops, it's balancing out these two cars rather than the advantage. Up the inside! That's brave. It doesn't work at turn seven, but Heinrich showing intent then to Nikolai Schiergaard. But he's got to be careful. He's got to be careful. Gilles Magnus is just directly behind him. And, you know, these two get too you know, friendly on the racetrack. That'll be a gift for Magnus. Well, indeed. So there, Jordan Love comes through, still being chased by Valentino Rossi, trying to recover after his little moment up at turn seven. There is the Lapaline and Calderelli battle. This is the fourth and fifth overall look as they come out of turn 11 now. And Rossi still hustling on. Jordan Love on target for Silver Cup honours. And here got Jordan Love ahead of Valentino Rossi, Mercedes ahead of BMW, but the Mercedes looking the stronger at the moment. Yeah, so when Valentino has been able to close the gap, but uh, again, we're running out of time, only four minutes to go, and that applies to Calderelli as well. I mean, I see the Ferrari going very, very more aware and defense up, up the inside. Could have been contact, but can Calderelli get alongside the outer line? The Ferrari has will give better exit speed. So here we are back again, status quo coming into turn three, then into the half advance, see who can do what, who's going to go who, who's going to go high. Calderelli chooses to take the lower line against a status quo. Nobody loses, nobody gains. But Calderelli all over the back of the Ferrari and Constant Apollinen, as I say, he's got better and better over his GT3 seasons. And here he is defending from one of the very best, especially in a Lamborghini. Calderelli has become a real Lamborghini specialist. 
another former single-seater racer, spent time racing in Japan, didn't he, Formula Nippon, and uh, certainly enjoyed life out there. But as you say, he's been racing in the States of late for the K-Pax team back in Europe. Uh, right now, the Lamborghini bearing down on the Ferrari, but Lapalainen is hanging on to that place, and he needs to do so for three more minutes. And I thought Caldarelli was thinking about turn 10, but realistically opted not to. And again, the same thing with Rossi and Jordan Love. You know, you're in a position here now, coming down into the chicane, easily defended by the Ferrari. Five second time penalty for car 18, added to the final racing time for speeding in the pit lane. 18 is the Holly Horton, now Paul Meyer uh, Lamborghini that was damaged yesterday, but uh, it's been a tough weekend, but an impressive debut for Harley Horton, the British 18-year-old. Right, bit of a wild moment into Turn 13 from Lapalina, but he survived it. Yeah, but uh, I'm just interested in the different lines taken by Calderelli. He takes a much earlier cut from the corner. Now I'm hoping to be a little bit nearer to the back of the Ferrari, but the reality is two car lengths between them. Down into the braking zone again, he'll dive to the inside, but that is denied him yet again. So we were here one lap ago, this time contact on the Alba. Lamborghini gets the job done. A racing pass, a little bit of a love tap, but nothing that would be seen. In my view, two professional drivers let them go. Yeah, Lapalina went a bit deep, didn't he, into Tarzan. That opened the door, then he tried to close it, but Van Calderelli was all that already in his space. So Calderelli is through, he's up in a fourth place. Consta Lapalina falls to fifth and there will be time for one more lap at the end of this. So the race leading car, Ricardo Fellas Audi, has now cleared Van Thoy. He's four seconds up the road, and they're going to win both races this weekend. The first team so to do outright, and they're going to win the championship. And there is Lapalainen hustling on, but getting two wheels on the curb and then on the dirt at turn seven. Well, he's going to try and get back at Calderelli, but the clock's ticking down with just a fraction over a minute to go. And that's our drone leaves us out of... Krugan Hulsen takes a bit of a head stagger back to follow another car. Absolutely, and there is another fight. Christian Klein, who is squabbling now with the Ferrari of Nicola Marinangeli, and goes a little bit wide. Marinangeli in turn has jumped up past Marcus Paverud. So Marinangeli is the man on the move, and he gets up the inside of the former Grand Prix racer. Can't pass him there, though. No, it's very difficult. You, the, 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 the line through turn nine is that very wide line rather than trying to pinch the apex you lose too much speed in doing so it's a shorter distance as our race leader comes across and this will be his final lap well indeed and it's going to be a race winning final lap a championship winning final lap and for the attempto racing squad that operates the trezor orange one Audi, Arkin Arca's team won yesterday, but put them in the lead of the championship. They're going to win the race today. That's going to cement the championship. And two wins in a weekend hasn't been done this year before, so this is the absolutely ideal way to round out the season. Well, it's easy to say all this, but from the beginning of the season, this car, the 40, with the two drivers, Ricardo Fellow and Matteo Drudi, to me, were always going to be a very good, strong partnership in a very good car. And, you know, Audi, the Audi factory team, this is the Audi R8 LMS GT3 Evo 2, to give it its full title, is still a car yeah. capable of not just winning races, but winning championships. And it's a shame that Audi Sport is going to come to a close at the end of this season. There'll be lots of Audi drivers, of course, on the job market, all sorts of whispers as who is going where for next season, which team will be operating what as GT Racing takes another step forward. But Ricardo Feller, who is rumoured to be staying in DTM, and Matteo Drudi, who is looking for a, a drive elsewhere, have this year been a great double act in Sprint Cup. And here, Valentino Rossi is going to round out his Sprint Cup season with a move and possibly a pass on Jordan Love. Couldn't quite do it, though. No, again, that inside line was slightly slower, but he got the position, got alongside the Mercedes, now down into the chicane, being very circumspect, but thinking about it and deciding wisely not to bother. Race two winners and the champions in Fanatec GT Sprint Cup. Ricardo Fella, Matthew Drudy win at Zandvoort. Two wins this weekend. The championship is theirs. Dries Van Thor, Charles Witt second, although they're under investigation for the safety car restart. Third, Nicholas Crutton, Callum Williams, Gold Cup champions. Andrea Caldarelli, Marco Mappelli fourth. Consul Lapaline and Giacomo Altway fifth. Sixth, Jordan Love, silver champion. Seventh is Valentino Rossi with Maxime Martin. Eighth, Thierry Verbulen and Albert Costa ahead of Nicolas Hiergaard and Benjamin Goethe. And Laurin Heinrich and Ayn Schengouven. Tenth, Matthew Drudy is a champion. He's a race winner and he's delighted.
Well, they've done a nice standing job all through the season. And it, you know, two drivers come together and they gel as a partnership, as a team. And, and for a relatively young team like a Tempter, they've done a nice standing job. So they will be, well, there you can see the joy, the delight of the faces of the team and Matteo Drudy. And this is what is on Spotify on the, the uh, Attempto team's stereo. Nice. We are the champions. It's playing out, and they know it, and they are absolutely delighted. And that's a team that has worked and worked and worked and worked since it came into GT racing over a decade ago, and now is one of the big teams. I mean, Matteo Drudy is normally he, he, he's such a restrained personality and character. To see him actually showing the level of emotion well, that's understandable. It's a big, probably the biggest day of his career. Yeah, indeed so. And Valentino Rossi, then seventh overall. Silver, by the way, Jordan Love was the uh, winner. Second, Jesse Salmanautio, sharing with Ezekiel Compank. And third, Nicola Marinangeli and Sean Hudspeth. Uh, in terms of champions, well, the uh, Pro Cup, the overall champions, Ricardo Feller, Matthew Drudy, gold to Nicholas Critton and Callum Williams there, who were the winners in the race as well. And the silver champion, Jordan Love, as a soloist, outscoring anybody else, and uh, they win. Jordan Love and Frank Bird, silver in the race, and that secures the championship for Jordan Love after a great season. And an interesting year it has been. Fascinating to see the battles in the classes, fascinating to see how different drivers have developed coming into new cars new teams and in some cases a new discipline over the course of this last season of sprint cup racing that's delivered action a plenty this weekend yes i mean i'm just thinking back you know the inception of gt3 racing and where we were then and where we are now these cars the sophistication the evolution of them you know particularly on the aerodynamic side and of course the thing that's made it so competitive and so exciting to watch is the balance of performance how, how well matched the balance of performance ultimately is across the season. Yeah. I know that there'll be occasions one team or one manufacturer will say, well, we feel we're not getting a fair balance, but it's, it works out even Stevens pretty much all the way around. You've got a feel for Timo Bogoslavski after being the completely innocent victim of somebody else's zealotry on lap one. And uh, perhaps understandably, he was not in a talkative mood, but sympathy certainly goes his way. But two race wins this weekend uh, and a really fine season all round because the uh, total now is four victories out of the ten races for Matthew Drudy, for Ricardo Feller. Brilliant way to win the crown. Yes, and I mean, we can sort of tease ourselves by saying what would have happened had Burgos Lajski not had been put in the situation he was in, had he done a stint, had he handed over to Marcello, would Marcello have been able to take the fight to the chequered flag with the 40 Audi. Would he have gotten ahead of the 40 Audi? Well, I've got a view of it. It's not fair, I should say it now, because it's not relevant. But it's been an outstanding job by both the 88 and the 40. The Mercedes and the Audi, they've been basically battling each other throughout the season. Ricardo Feller, Matthew Drudy, our Sprint Cup champions in Fanatec GT World Challenge Europe, powered by AWS. They stand atop the Audi, the type of car that has been the backbone of GT3 pretty much since its inception and Akin Arka's team takes the title. Chris Reinker of Audi Sport celebrates with the drivers as well and although as a dad Akin Arka can't celebrate with uh, his son Alex because they're not the sprint silver champions his team has done a great job overall. I still find it hard to believe that Audi are pulling out of, of motorsport to the, the extreme that they are after so much achievement and, and, and such a good customer base they've built up as well. well Jordan I mean, Love, silver champion. I mean, and the, the number of ideas that compete week in, week out, I mean, there's a significant number of the entries in, a, in, a, in some cases, 55 or more car field. Yeah. And uh, the car is still competitive. The car is capable of winning races. We've just seen the race won by Feller and Drudy and won it, won it on pace, not because they lucked in. And that, there's more rain. Look at it. There we go. There we go. Well, at least it had the good grace to wait until the uh, race had ended. Although there's another race for single-seaters to come later in the afternoon. And the headaches will be starting now about tyre choice. But a dramatic end to a dramatic season. And uh, we've got, of course, Sprint Cup and overall combined champions to celebrate here. We'll hear from those winning drivers very shortly. Gemma Scott down in the pit lane is trying to round them all up.
get the race positions, get the champions where she needs them, and then, of course, the podium ceremonies will be underway as well. But race winners and champions are Matteo Drudi and Ricardo Fella. They're with Gemma. Boys, congratulations. That's it. You are champions. Yeah, yeah, it feels amazing. For sure, it was not the best way to, to win the championship. And really sorry, I wanted to have a clean race, but we couldn't do anything about that. But still, I think we did a really good season. We've been always fast when we had the chance. Uh, so, yeah, I have to thank the team. Ricky always did a mega job. The car has been amazing the whole year. So it was not easy, but we did it. Absolutely, you did. Bringing that home, how does that feel? That feels good. Double victory, huh? It could be worse. <laughs> Uh, no, I think we showed everyone what we can do. I uh, was super happy uh, of the team. Everyone did a great job. Mattia, all season, no mistakes. Always fast. Uh, super, super, ha super happy to be able to share a car uh, whole season with a guy like this. So, yeah, tonight we need to celebrate. Congratulations to both of you. Make your way to the podium. They go there as race winners. They'll come back as champions uh, because they'll be the podium ceremonies for the champions in each of the categories as well so the winning audi the winning margin three and a half seconds and uh, i suspect some of the teams will keep the cars for next year because they're still as john's made the point competitive they're winning they've got uh, all the spare parts they need for another season or so so we're not going to see the back of the audi even though the race winning car was a little bit battle scarred having to avoid the errant mercedes facing the wrong way early on let's go back to the pit lane and Gemma has rounded up more champions Boys, congratulations. That smile is very much deserved. Champions in your class. Yeah, thank you. It was incredible. Uh, qualifying this morning was amazing. And then to, to finish off like that, uh, the overall podium as well, yeah, amazing. Uh, really well done to Nicholas as well. It's been a great season. And yeah, we were obviously behind in the championship coming in and we knew we had to give everything we got. And uh, that's what we did. And we did it. So. I mean, it's all about your, your class at the championship as well, but fighting up there right at the top today. Yeah, it was uh, quite interesting. Something we weren't used to that much, but uh, no, I think the last couple of rounds were really hard for us, um, and we didn't really think it was possible to turn it around. But uh, yeah, Callan changed it all this morning. Uh, he made it possible, and uh, yeah, in the end, uh, yeah, I still can't believe that we are champions. You better believe it. Congratulations once again, boys. Thank well you. done. Callan Williams, Nicholas Critton, the Gold Cup champions. Uh, and they've had a really good season, and they've, they've looked really good in that car. It seems to suit them. Well, they're, they're again, two young drivers, you know, beginning careers, and they're driving for their future. So they've put their marker down, they've won the gold category, and it's great to see what happens to them in the future. They win the Gold Cup in sprint. They win the Gold Cup in the combined championship when you take into account uh, sprint and endurance points as well, because there are effectively three championships here. Sprint, endurance, and as I say, that's a combined uh, classification as well. So, Jordan Love is the silver champion. He and Frank Bird are the race winners. Frankie, Jordan, a fantastic race weekend result for you. Frank, come to you first. You were leading at one point in there. You couldn't quite believe it, right? Yeah, I couldn't believe it. It was mad. Uh, made a nice clean start, and then uh, unfortunately the rain came, and then uh, I think it was 46 car in front went off, and uh, it was like a dream come true, but it didn't last too long. Uh, unfortunately, I went off myself, but um, had to bring it home, and then Jordan did the, did the hard work when it started to rain. So, um, yeah, it's been a, been a mega year. been a pleasure to be with Jordan, and uh, hopefully bigger and better things next year. Absolutely, yeah, that rain came absolutely out of nowhere. Jordan, you brought that home, and that also gives you the championship this year for, for Silver. Yeah, obviously super happy with that. Um, that was our goal going into the year, and to tick that off, it's, it's a huge achievement for, uh, for the whole team. And uh, it's been great to have Frank back this weekend and to drive with him the whole year. You know, this is just as much his championship as it is mine. So it's a shame we missed him for two rounds. It was great that Alan did a great job in stepping in there. And yeah, just want to say thank you to the whole team, uh, family back at home and, uh, and everyone. It's been, uh, it's been a tremendous year and super happy to, to top it off like this. And it's been uh, certainly a challenge weekend. They've thrown everything at us and unfortunate to the number 99 in, uh, in that last race. But uh, yeah, super pumped. Absolutely. Party time tonight, right? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. So, Jordan Love, good character. It's been good to have him in Fanatec GT this year. Uh, that car was certainly well driven. Look at that. I mean, yes, down at the chicane, that's what is they're so slippery. You've just got to really pick your brake spot and uh, not be overly ambitious. And uh, 77 did a great job. Again, all helped by having a really excellent grid position. I think, worth pointing out, the car that won the race overall 
Feller and Rudy, they actually started back on the fifth row yeah, of the grid. Good point. Which was actually maybe overlooked because it was, there was so much going on, and particularly in the, again in the opening laps. But that was, I mean, and the, uh, the contact that occurred between the 40 and the 88 in the chicane, we didn't, we thought there was, but we saw it on that slow move. The right front bodywork damage quite significant. Yeah, indeed, you're right. So a race win for Ricardo Feller and Matthew Drudy from Dries Van Thor and Charles Witz with Nicholas Critton and Callan Williams coming home third. Andrea Caldarelli was fourth with Marco Mapelli, Constant Lapalainen and Giacomo Altuve were fifth. And the winning silvers were sixth, Jordan Love and Frank Bird. The winning gold car, of course, was third overall, Nicholas Critton and Callan Williams. And champions in sprint overall, Ricardo Feller and Matthew Drudy. Gold, Nicholas Critton and Callan Williams. And Jordan Love is the silver champion at the end of a dramatic race, a dramatic weekend, a dramatic season. To the podium then comes the third place overall crew, Nicholas Critton and Callan Williams after a really good race to be third overall as well as the gold winners. For second, although there is an investigation for the safety car restart, but Dries Van Thor and Charles Wirtz for now second place. And the BMW drivers, they had one win over the course of the year, take the second step. But then for the fourth time this year, for the second time this weekend, the race winners, the champions to the top step of the podium. And they are Mattia Drudi and Ricardo Feller. They bring to an end that record run of three in a row for Dries Van Thor and Charles Witz. They couldn't do four and they were beaten by the Audi team of the uh, Trezor Orange One squad. The Attempto Racing Engineers have done a grand job all season. Race winners, champions, Matthew Drudy and Ricardo Feller. Congratulations to Matteo Drudi, to Ricardo Feller, to the Trezor Orange One team, as Eric Fahers, the head of race operations at the Zandvoort circuit, steps forward to present the trophies to the gold winners. They'll be back again repeatedly, in fact, because there's a gold podium and a champion's podium to come. But for Nicholas Critton and uh, for Callum Williams, third place trophies, then for second, Dries Van Thor and Charles Witz, and then the champion's trophies, sorry, the winner's trophies uh, in a moment will go the way of Matthew Drudy and Ricardo Feller. But the team's trophy has gone down an absolute storm. I mean, the, I tell you, the representative from the team is having the time of his life. <laughs> the, he's, if the two drivers are very sort of almost laid back about it, the team member, he's up there giving it large. Absolutely. What is it Jordan Love said? Super pumped. So uh, he certainly is. Right, there are the race winners, Matthew Drudy and Ricardo Feller. And... Uh, Dries Van Thor and Charles Witz remember the feeling because they were sprint champions so often but uh, second today cameraman absolutely legs it out of the way well he's got about a 50,000 pound camera on his shoulder <laughs> he doesn't want it drenched in champagne like Matthew Drudy has just been courtesy of Ricardo Fella Nicholas Critton and uh, Callum Williams third overall winning gold great effort the second gold cap car was 11th overall Gilles Magnus um, Finley Hutchison and uh, there Nicholas Crutton has got a, a wet back courtesy of his co-driver. Now I mentioned that 32 BMW is under investigation for safety car restart. Have a look at the red BMW. It's fifth in the queue. Dries Van Thor at the wheel. He comes up alongside and is he alongside as they get to the line? Oh, it's marginal. Oh, I tell you what. That's what's being looked at, though. That is, uh, I think you need another angle than that head-on shot because it doesn't really give you enough detail. So that'll be a tough one for the stewards to make a determination on. And I don't know whether they can use the GPS that the cars have got to determine where each car was. And at that very moment, they crossed the line, but it's going to be probably a longish night for the stewards. It's an argument over that. Let's look at the way that it finishes at the end of the season in gold, where Cameron Williams and Nicholas Critton take the title. Second, Alberto Di Folco and Aurelian Panis, who led coming into the weekend, and then Finley Hutchison and Gilles Magnus finishing third. Says Argazo Adamateki retiring from the race. They ended up fourth for Paul Evra, Simon Gachet coming home in fifth.
great season for the WRT BMW drivers, Callum Williams and Nicholas Critton. And they are about to come back onto the podium because it is the gold podium next. Alberto Di Folco and Aurelian Panis then come onto the podium for third in the class. They didn't win the race, they didn't win the title. You can understand their frustration. Gilles Magnus and Finley Hutchison arrive for second. And then the race winners in gold, the champions as well. WRT, very, very happy about that. Another very emotive uh, engineer. And here are the drivers once more. This time it's the top step as the gold race winners and the gold cup champions get again. It's Callum Williams and Nicholas Crutton. WRT and BMW take honours in gold and the Belgian team has much to celebrate. WRT drivers put their Pirelli winners caps back on and trophies presented from Matteo Draga, the Pirelli circuit activities manager. A word quickly about the uh, Come to You Audi driver, Gilles Magnus Finley Hutchison, come to you after a long and successful time with Audis both in GT3 and touring cars. He's going to be an Aston Martin team next year and it's going to be fascinating to see which drivers are still with the team with a, a different brand. Yes, and, and looking forward to seeing what Aston Martin can produce in terms of where they have been some years ago to where they will be in 2024, and I'm sure there'll be massive strides both on an aerodynamic and engineering side from that particular brand. So the trophy's held aloft, and Gold Cup winners at Zandvoort are Nicholas Critton and Callan Williams. Champagne awaits for some, not for all. Well, you, you, you might call them the junior BMW team <laughs> members. Yeah. So they're slowly, slowly, they haven't quite yet mastered getting the cork out of the bottle. Uh, Finley Hutchinson certainly does. He's sprayed pretty much everybody remaining on the podium. And so there we go. There we are. Finally, finally, the celebrations that they've worked hard all year to achieve. And then the podium will be dressed for the uh, silver champion, Jordan Love. He is, of course, a race winner today with Frank Bird. Uh, Lorenzo Petrezzi, Alex Arca ending the year second. Yes, it's Salman Alfio and Ezekiel Compang third. Frank Bird, having had to miss Hockenheim and Valencia, he's fourth. Then Leonardo Moncini and Jacopo Guidetti, the Honda drivers, with Nicola Marinangeli and Sean Hudspeth coming home sixth. And Alain Valente's part season, seventh after uh, a victory that he had with Jordan Love. And it was a very happy Jordan Love that uh, got out of the car. The Mercedes with skippy and a turkey on it because the bird family business is poultry and uh, the inevitable kangaroo for the australian driver yes yes not talk about skippy <laughs> understand turkeys coming at that time of the year <laughs> so the silver podium awaits and it is going to be the uh, sean hudspeth nicola marinangeli combination for third place the singaporean driver Sean Hudspeth, the uh, Italian former single-seater racer, Nicola Marinangeli for AF Corsa and the older Ferrari, the 488. Then for second, yes, it's Salman Alfio and the irrepressible Ezekiel Paris Compank, the man behind the Mad Panda Motorsport team. And it's going to be another very happy team rep from the Haupt Racing Team for Jordan Love and Frank Bird, who win in silver at Zandvoort. to the top step of the podium. Jordan Love and Frank Bird for the German Haupt Racing Team.
So the anthem plays for the winning team. Applause for Jordan Lau for Frank Bird, and then trophies will be presented again. Mateo Draga steps forward. Pirelli's second activities manager, and uh, Nicola Marinangeli and Sean Hudspeth, who a few years ago was racing Porsches, came to racing Carrera Cup GB, but uh, has been a, a, a school at Ferrari racer in recent seasons. Uh, he and Nicola Marinangeli have worked well together this year. Then for second place, yes, it's Almanaldio and Ezekiel Compank. And then the trophy to the winners will be for the Hout Racing Team. And the biggest trophy of all uh, for the category winners, the silver trophies winners, then Jordan Lamb and Frank Bird. Frank rounding out a, a difficult season with the death of his father, but he rounds it out with another victory and a big smile as well. And Pirelli also have extra awards, so there is a set of tyres for Mad Panda team, a set of tyres for the uh, Hout Racing team drivers, and not only that, but there is champagne awaiting them as well, and a great season for Jordan Lav. Let's hope that he stays in European GT racing and we see him go from strength to strength next year. Indeed. And, well, a little bit more demonstrative. And <laughs> Ezekiel Perez come back, realises what was coming and he did a runner. And there he's, <laughs> he's back, back again. He's back, he's back. <laughs> and st we still don't know Mad Panda, what is it What is it all about? And I spoke to Ezekiel Perez come back this morning and said, can you tell me now it's the end of the season? He said, no, the only time I will tell you is when I'm standing in the winner's podium of Spa 24 hours. That's the promise I've made. OK. And that's what he's going to stand by. We will take, uh, we'll hold it to that. Uh, now, the uh, championship podiums beckon and uh, they will be the overall podium first. That's going to go to, of course, uh, the Orange One Trezor team. Arkinaka's squad that operates this car of Matthew Drudy and uh, Ricardo Feller. It's a chance not only for the drivers, but all the team personnel to be there. And John, you're identifying that damage again. Yeah, man, just we saw it a few minutes ago in slow mo, and you can see as he comes out of the chicane just how much damage there was done. It looked only a very light touch, and it probably was, but it was sufficient to do a lot of damage. And it's the location of the bodywork that was pretty going to be key that it didn't affect, or in fact, pull apart with the, with the wind pressure. There are the winners. So the, the roof panel of their Audi, um, you can see it's, it's not actually made out of 20 gauge metal. It's a very thin roof, but that's what you get when you get one of these super lightweight, super competitive GT3 cars. Indeed, so, so uh, the two drivers having celebrated and um, the leaden skies, four single seaters to take to the track in a couple of minutes. So, overall, in the Sprint Cup, Matthew Drudy and Ricardo Feller, the champions from Raffaele Marcello and Timo Bogostowski, Dries van Thor and Charles Witt taking third, ahead of Thierry Vermeulen and Albert Costa, Valentino Rossi and Maxime Martin in fifth place. Four race wins over the course of the season, and they're all queued up, look, en masse, ready to go onto the podium for the celebrations, and deservedly so, for the Trezor Orange One team, the Sprint Cup champions. Well, the drivers we know are Ricardo Feller and Matthew Drudy, but it's a true team effort, and the overall champions in Sprint Cup head to the podium, led by Matthew Drudy and Ricardo Feller. Engineers, mechanics, sponsors, truckies, data boffins, just about everybody that's been involved in operating the car, including in the jeans, Arkin Arka, the man that is a Tempto Racing. And it's a big moment for his team because it's knocked on the door of success. It's had race wins in GT terms, but this is its day of days. And his son, Alex Arka, comes to the podium as well, vanquished in silver. But in a sense, his car played a pretty big part in the outcome. Well, it's a family affair. Yes, indeed. indeed, so the Arca family. Uh, there we are, there's the joy uh, and, a, and a great title to an excellent effort all year uh, by the drivers of the 40 Tracer Attempto RD team. And, uh, well, 
I know they're going to have a party tonight, but you know, <laughs> they're going to have to get a bit more revved up, aren't they? They're possibly cold. It's a very chilly day here, but uh, it's all sunk in. It's quite a thing. Arkin Arka's team initially was the, the, the real go-to team in, in Porsche racing, Carrera Cup Germany, in the 2010-2011 sort of period, came into the old days of what was then the Blancpain Endurance Series, uh, tried different brands and struggled a bit and didn't have the right drivers, changed cars, changed drivers and learnt and grew and learnt and grew and started when it hooked up with Audi, winning races and it's always continued to develop and progress and now is a serious championship winning team. But this is another serious championship winning team, WRT, and it's a team Ironically, really, John, that even though it's won gold with Nicholas Crisson and Callum Williams, has had a lot of learning to do over the year. Well, they've gone from the Audi, the family they've been a part of for what, seven, eight seasons, to an entirely different concept, a much, much more, you might say, sophisticated car, because what BMW have developed with this M4 GT is, is remarkable, but it's, it's, it's a cultural change as, as well as it is you know, a physical change. You've gone from a mid-rear engine car to a mid-front engine car, and everything about the BMW is a, a different, but there's nothing you could take over from Audi that you could apply to BMW. So they're learning on the hoof, but I think a great effort indeed by the, the, the two young drivers in the 30 WRT entry, and you know, Helen Williams and Nicholas Cruton. They've sort of sailed under the radar because yeah. it's always been a focus on the 46 with Valentino Rossi, and of course the 32 with Dries van Thor and Charles Vets, but they are the two drivers who have actually achieved for the team. They've won their, their class. Yeah, Nicholas Crisson was a very successful driver in BMWs uh, for the Schubert team last year in the German Championship. Uh, and uh, he and Callum Williams have made a, a good partnership this year. Podium coming up. Let's look at the highlights of that race, which began with Maxime Martin taking the lead on the way to the first corner. And a big dive by Frank Birds to try and get himself up past the Williams Crisson BMW. Timo Boguslanski had said pre-race he needed to keep out of trouble and try and maintain a good position. He had a good run out of the Tarzan hairpin as Einstein Guven was less lucky, his Porsche being turned around and just avoided by the traffic. But then, later in the lap, Boguslanski's nightmare happened. He was turned around, that was bad enough, but then he got hit and that was where the damage came as Nicholas Barth couldn't avoid the back of the car having in turn been hit by the Honda. Out of the race, out of the championship hunt, Boguslanski. Race back underway, Maxi Martin led. And then the rain started to come, and that made life really treacherous for the drivers. And this was Martin in the lead, slithering off the road at the end of the pit straight. He was able to rejoin, but he fell back in the pack. A full course yellow period was triggered, and it lasted all the way through the pit window, after which it was the Williams Crutton BMW ahead. But Ricardo Feller was absolutely flying. He'd taken over from Matthew Drudy and was working his way through the field. sorted out the number 30 BMW with a brilliant move around the outside at turn 13. And after that, Ricardo Feller just had to tick off the laps. WRT did a switch to allow Dries Van Thor up in second place overall to see what he, if anything, could do about the leading Audi, but the answer was very little. Ricardo Feller and Matthew Drudy on target for win number four of the season, and with it, the championship. Nicholas Critton coming home for second, winning the Gold Cup along with co-driver Callum Williams and Jordan Love and Frank Bird winning silver. There are the Silver Cup celebrations, second uh, in the Silver Championship and the winning team, so the Attempto team are back on the podium. So great job done by Attempto over the course of the season, Lorenzo Petresi and Alex Arca, the drivers there being celebrated for second, even before we've got to Jordan Love as the actual silver champion. But uh, as the Attempto team make their way off the podium, uh, there'll be uh, much to celebrate for the squad this evening. Lorenzo Petresi having moved uh, into GT racing last year in the Endurance Championship for Trezor Car Collection. Having come from Italian F4 and Alex Arca, of course, regular in GT as well as in the uh, Asian Le Mans series. Now, the overall championship winners, when you take sprint and endurance together, Timo Bogoslavski and Raffaele Marcello, and uh, their Mercedes has had uh, a good season. 
frustrating that it's uh, not a, a sprint title, but what a great job done to win the combined championship, Timo Bogoslowski and Rafaeli Marchiello. We'll see you next year. Bye for now.